Look, one of the biggest mistakes people make when they start a fitness journey or try to lose weight or become more fit and healthy is they rush the process. Look, here's the deal. It's not hard to lose weight. Actually, statistically speaking, people do it all the time. It's keeping it off that's the problem. Take your time. Now, this doesn't have a lot to do with the body's physiological mechanisms. Really, it has to do with the mental part. Big changes are hard to keep around. It's hard to keep them to stick. So take it slow. Taking it slow will improve your odds of maintaining your success. You know, the irony of that fitness tip is that the slower, what, what you would think is the slower way is actually the faster way. What I mean by that is that it's the, the tortoise tour. in the hair. Well, no, like most people who say they want to lose 30 or 50 pounds, they don't just want to lose 30 or 50 pounds off their body. Right. They want to lose fat. Right. And so they think, okay, if I go really fast, I can lose, you could lose somebody in a week's time, 10, 15 pounds off of a scale, but it's not going to be all fat. You're going to lose some muscle. You're going to lose water weight in there. And so this idea of like getting that you can go faster than the right way, it's not true. Like the right way is the faster way. Although it seems slower if, if we just looked at the number on the scale, but the fastest way to lose body fat is a, a very controlled balanced deficit and, and taking your time where you just carve off body fat and you maintain as much muscle as you possibly can, which seems slow looking yeah. at the scale, but it's actually the fastest way to change body. Yeah. It's misleading because you're losing weight and, and you're losing mass overall, but you're not just specifically targeting body fat and you're not going to be in a position where you're revealing your muscles and looking like, you know, you actually work out. Yeah. Okay. My, my famous line was, uh, you know, you want to lose 20 pounds or just cut your leg off. Right. Yeah. People always laugh at that, but it's true. I think there's two reasons why this is a challenge. One is for the average person, when they finally get into the state of mind of, okay, I'm going to do this. It's usually because something happened that triggered insecurity. Uh, they felt, I don't know, bad about themselves or whatever. And when you get in that state of like feeling bad about yourself in that way, you can't wait to change it. You want to get out of your body. You all of a sudden become aware or allow yourself to become aware of how uncomfortable you are. And so then you don't care uh, what the process is like. They'll, in fact, how many times have you heard someone say this? I don't care uh, how I lose it. I just want it off. I'll worry about keeping it off when I'm done. Mm -hmm. So that's the first problem, and we can address that. But the second issue is that we're not addressing the real challenge. I'm, and this is true. The statistics and the data shows us. You ask any trainer who's been training people for a long time, they'll tell you this. Losing weight is easy in comparison to keeping it off. Keeping it off is the real challenge. What stops people from keeping it off? It's all about the mental Sweet psychological approach. piece. It's can I maintain this lifestyle? You're not going to make a radical change to your lifestyle and maintain it all at once. It just doesn't work that way with nothing. Nothing works that way. It has to be a process in which you learn and grow and develop habits and disciplines and slowly embark on this journey until you have accomplished what you want. And then the journey never really stops. But back to the first point, if you approach this with this, like, I hate myself, I'm gross, I'm not attractive, I'm inadequate, whatever. Yeah, of course you're going to rush it. You know, you, you, you want to change that as fast as possible. But if you look at it and say, you know, I'm uncomfortable and it's because I haven't really cared for myself. I'm going to care for myself now. I'm going to do this in a way where I'm going to take care of myself like somebody I care about. Then you're probably going to have a more balanced approach. You wouldn't treat your kid that way, right? You wouldn't look at your kid and be like, that's it. We're radically changing your life. We would Ew, look, gross. We would have Lose empathy that. and be yeah. like, okay, let's go step by step and make this something that's sustainable. But if we look at it as the sustainability problem and not a, can I get there problem, then I think people approach this uh, in a much more effective way. And you're right, Adam, that's, that's the second part, which is how we sell it, which is also true. The right way is also the fast way. Right. It's, there's a huge myth that the wrong way is the fast way and the right way is the slow way. No, the wrong way doesn't work. You won't keep it off and you're going to lose a ton of muscle uh, with that process. And then you're going to end up in this shitty situation where you plateaued after 12 pounds of weight loss. And then you're like, okay, now, now what do I do? Do you think that if we get like tools that give you real time data and feedback on what's happening in your body, that this will solve some of this problem? Like, do you think if your clients knew that like, like almost hour by hour, day by day, like, oh, today I, you know, built this much more muscle and, or I lost this much more yeah. fat or I lost this much muscle because I did, you know, do you think <laughs> that when science gets to that and technology gets to that point? Cause I don't think we're that far from getting to this yeah. where we get some real time feedback on what's happening to your body based off of what you're doing to it at the moment. 
like er, you know i mean even with like glucose monitors we're getting close to where it's yeah. like we're getting this understanding do you think that will change this because i think that plays a big role too is i think a lot of times you think you're people think they're doing the right things by this approach. And in reality, it's more than they need to a lot of times. It's harder than it has to be. And if they were only getting that feedback of, oh, when I do X, Y, and Z, this actually results in this. And oh, wow, when I actually just focus on these few things, this makes, and this is easier. This, Do you think that will I, change? I think if it's in combination with a good coach, yes. I I, I don't think it's- Oh, you don't think people will be able to interpret no, that themselves? No, I mean, even if it spells it, it out to, to them. automatic. Yeah, I don't think it's an information problem. I, I really <laughs> think it's more of a like, how do I do this? Um, how am I going to feel? How do I deal with these feelings? How do I develop these new behaviors? So like you, you brought up the CGMs when, when regular people or the average person uses a CGM, the success rate is like they would with an Apple watch or any other device. But when you combine it with a coach who they can point to, Hey, did you feel a particular way at this time? Cause I noticed you had the spike in blood sugar and then this drop and then they can make those connections. Then I think we have, now we have a greater success. So now imagine a coach getting this report from their client and they can literally call them or talk to them and say, Hey, uh, what did you do this morning? I noticed this thing happened. Did you feel a particular way? And then they can make those connections. What do you think? Yeah. I think it'd be like anything else in terms of motivation waves. Cause it, regardless of the amount of like great information that they even visibly see, I think that they would be motivated for a while and then like old behaviors and, and, um, tendencies would kind of creep back and they would sort of ignore blissfully ignore, uh, real data that's like right in front of them. I just don't see people like, in unless they're actually like completely, it's their idea and they're like going all in and like they're trying to make a radical lifestyle change. Like I just feel like it, it will just follow a lot of the same patterns with all the rest of the tech. We have lots of really good information that tells you specifically, like here's here's your patterns and and if you just change these things, it's gonna have a, a massive sort of. Uh, change in your life. Yeah. yeah, I think, I don't know. I think it's a bit of the interpretation for people like the, even like the CGM, like the, the reason why it requires a coach and help like that is because it, the people still are uncertain to what this means. I'm talking like when we get to the point where you can do, you can cha change a handful of variables in the day and then literally see the outcome from a body fat percentage, muscle gaining, muscle gain, lean, like that imagine how how huge that would be. It's it like could be. It would, and, and and imagine I how I think a lot of people would be stoked on it, but I'm not sure. I don't know. Like just the general population, I think is well. Okay, so there'll be uh, there's a this is the story. part where I, I somewhat agree with you, right? So there'll be a learning curve of like yeah. it still will require some coaches to it, to explain like why that happened, right? Because yeah. somebody might change two or three variables, have no fucking idea why 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 did that happen, right? So you'll have to have a coach that says like, see, this is what I meant when you fed the body the way you were supposed to, you hit your protein intakes like I told you. That's it. You didn't oh you yeah. didn't go do two hours of intense cardio. Yes. You just strength you trained. All that. Look at what happened. And see, and then like, now let's run another day back or let's test your way. Let's starve the body tomorrow. Good. Get on that treadmill, run like crazy. And oh, look, the scale went down, but look what happened. We lost muscle. Yeah. And so yeah. I think that, we'll, and I don't think we're that far from having tools that will give that kind of feedback to people. And then once the education is there of understanding like what that means, I don't know. I think that could be a big. I think you'd have to have the coach because just imagine this scenario, a person has the data tells them specifically what's happened to their body. They're busting their ass, right? They're working hard. They're starving themselves. Then they look at it. What? My body fat percentage didn't go down, but my weight went down. How does that work? Oh, I lost muscle. I give up. That's what you need to get from a lot of people. I tried all these things. Yeah. It's not for me. My genetics aren't great, or this is just too hard. I can't figure this out. Or maybe they'll try one fad to the next fad. And, and just get totally discouraged versus having a coach who's like, hey, here's what's yeah, happening. The genetic angle. For yeah, sure. you know, here's what's happening. Here's the deal. Here's how you're going to feel. Because Here, look, here's the bottom line. We have way more information today than we ever did. People are worse. They're worse off. Now, it's it's because the default is poor health. Like, you, if you try to live a normal life and not be unhealthy. Impossible. You have to live an abnormal life. You have to have a scheduled workout and you have to inject activity into your day, whereas other people are just sedentary. You have to eat unlike everybody else. You have to pay attention to your body signals rather than numbing your body. 
with every over the counter. Or- yeah, but imagine if you had a t- tools that actually gave you that feedback to where you're not it's like an alert comes up or it tells you because we have that kind of. Capability. If we had an AI coach, maybe if it was like, hey, yeah, today, do that's this. what I mean. Hey, I just today, feel like there'll that. be a guy that'll just use that data and be like, look how many Twinkies I can get to set it off. Well, yeah. <laughs> there will be that asshole. Yeah. There one hundred percent will be that. Oh, There's some, I mean, I didn't say we're gonna make everybody fit. That ain't fucking happening. That ain't happening. <laughs> I just think, get the highest blood. I just think yeah, there's exactly. I think most people that hire me really really wanted to try really wanted to figure it out and they just they it just wasn't they weren't connecting the dots yeah but let me exactly yeah. I don't, and, and i would love i mean i would love it personally i think that's that's yeah but I'm let me at, ask but. you guys this were there uh trainers with who were smarter than you guys when you guys were trainers who all, knew who all, had more all my trainers were smart okay <laughs> well hold on what made you guys know <laughs> That was Trick the question. <laughs> okay, so yeah, but what made you successful? Yeah, yeah. It was the the it was the guidance. I was good with people. I was get. I, I, I was, ta- I was better at taking real simple stuff and yes. getting my clients to apply it, yeah. and that made me successful. That's you're, right. You're good yeah. at, at taking like every other smart trainer's ideas and you're actually make it them relatable. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, you're that's right. what you're good. That's at. actually the key yeah. right there. Yeah. yeah, if you want to be a successful trainer, this is it right here. Can you get the person to make the change that you want in a permanent way? If you can't, it don't matter what you know. It's a waste of time. Yeah, but I mean, I think that's because we're, I think the game will change. Like, I think that's what was so important now, to a point, not completely, because it'll all still come down to behaviors. and. You know what my habits. worry is, though, with that? Here's my worry with it, is that uh, people, because I, I know what happened with me with my phone. I already had a bad sense of direction. Now my sense of direction is completely gone. I don't know anybody's phone number. I've outsourced lots of things that I used to know to my phone. My worry is with these devices that people become more disconnected from their bodies. More like, oh, what is my, what is more, my more app More dependent say? on- Did I tell you guys- Yeah, that, what does this say? What does I, that say? Did I tell you I looked up getting a beeper? I actually looked up- oh, there's, a oh. company, there's a company that still sells beepers. I remember yeah. you talking about that. Yeah, I was like, you know what? Right, for that, for that same reason, I'm like, you know what? Maybe if I just fucking put the phone away and leave it at the house all day or leave it in the drawer somewhere and just keep my beeper for emergency <laughs> reasons. <laughs> We're going to text you boobies. Hey, really, hey, there's, yeah. there's, hey, there's yeah. <laughs> boobies. Remember that? Yeah, I would. Yeah, 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 all day long from you yeah, assholes boobies. all the time yeah. sending me yeah, dumb yeah, shit. Yeah. One, one, four, three. Yeah, yeah. this is not one, working. three. Yeah, oh, just 911. Nine nine that's the only reason why I'm going to go to my phone. <laughs> Otherwise, I'll call you later. All right, today's giveaway is Maps Aesthetic. If you want to win that program, you have to do this. Leave a comment below this video in the first 24 hours that we drop it. Subscribe to this channel and turn on notifications. If you win, we'll let you know in the comments section. We're also running a sale right now. Map Symmetry, half off. The RGB Bundle, half off. If you're interested, click on the link at the top of the description below. All right, back to the show. Did you guys have you guys had pagers in high school? I right? absolutely had a pager. I had a pager for like a minute. Why though? Just like, one. I, I think I went. Like it was a thing for me from like freshman or sophomore year of high school all the way till until hmm. I, I got a cell Remember phone. Remember when they got cool and they got like different colors? Yeah, I had like yeah. the different cases. Did you really? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. What was yeah. the brand? Two people texting. Was it Motorola? <laughs> Yeah, Motorola, that, I mean, there was a couple brands, but that was the yeah. main brand. Yeah, it was so, what a weird, like, you got to pay, so you're in high school, okay, so you have a page. It started with doctors, right? Isn't that how it came? Well, yeah, people that needed them. Yeah. So, we, we were in high school, you would get a page, and it meant to call someone back. That's all it meant. So, you got to go yeah. find a phone to call them back. Or your girlfriend would text you. No, or, you or, got, yeah, there's pager code now. I mean, don't you remember? Like That's, that's what, what I'm saying. That's Boobies, what I think, yeah. One, four, well, three. That, you, of course, you only remember those ones. <laughs> <laughs> what else when you put on a calculator? What there, else could yeah. you write on it? Miss me, call me, miss you, call me back, thinking of you. Those are there's all thinking kinds. Of there's you? a whole look at Doug. What? Look up. Uh, How did you thinking? Look of up. You? Yeah, yeah, eight two three. Look up. Oh uh, yeah, uh, stupid. Eight, yeah. I was thinking I don't of like, know why I randomly know that. That's right. Yeah, just that was right off the cuff. Facts. Pull up pager code. There's like a whole. There's a whole. I feel like Adam was a whole language all the time. Huh? Uh, We'd get thinking of you from him. Yeah, we all the time. Yeah. To, to listen to that it's like a low key uh, reminder yeah, yeah. to get back to work. I actually, I haven't said that in a long time to <laughs> Katrina. When Katrina and I first started dating, I would text her that. And she would be like, what the fuck is that? Oh, on the phone? Yeah, yeah. What is that? It's, you know what you could do? Code. Honestly, you don't need, although a pager might not be a bad idea. I'll get a brick phone. I don't Dude, know about that. That's pager. what my cousin did. Yeah. My cousin got a flip phone. And all you could do is call. Yeah. And you can text, but it's old school text. We have to hit the number three okay. times. You gotta, hug, yeah, yeah. hug you, sleep well, he he he. Like hug. There's all kinds he, of stuff. He, he. There's actually way more than that, though. There's like a what? what? Yeah. He he he. Why? What is that? What is it? There's just all kinds. There's he, way more than that. There's way more than that. You yeah. guys didn't have to. Remember, was what was the other the 
pig Latin that we learned when we were like in oh, that's elementary oh, school. That's totally or, different. Yeah, no, it's so. not. It's like you created a language. Like we, we people created yeah. a language around uh, pager code. So Je so it's funny he brings this up because Jessica and I had that a was conversation even before LOL, right? Yes. Yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. You can't do. Oh LOL. Yeah, yeah. Oh yeah. You can. You can do seven oh seven. That would be LOL. Oh, yeah. Look at that. Upside yeah, but no, but it was before. Wow. Like that didn't happen until. But nobody did. LOL. Nobody did LOL. Is my point. Yeah. Back then. That's so a whole new. Jessica and I had this conversation thing. like last week, and we're like, okay, let's do this. Let's only pick up our phones at distinct times and text each other only at those times, not check our phones, just turn off the TV as much as possible. Cause that's always like a, if you're busy with the kids or whatever, and you want to, you know, have them do something for 15 minutes. So we tried the effort. It lasted two days, went back to normal cause it's hard. Uh, so today we had that conversation and you know, what's funny is uh, you realize when you're doing that, how much you randomly share thoughts with. I was just going to ask you, how often do you and Jessica text in a day? A lot. That's weird. Yeah. What about you? Well, we're in love. Uh, yeah. That's weird. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Here and there. Uh, I mean, I don't. That's why I think yeah, that's I mean, weird. I think mean, that's I weird. I text Katrina and Courtney. I call her a lot. Yeah. <laughs> wow. That's fine. That, that makes more sense. Yeah. 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 They check with me every guy. I mean, do you? I mean, do you? Are you? How often do you guys? No, not very. I mean, uh, I guess. Yeah. She knows if, where you live, right? Yeah. She knows. Yeah. Where she knows your where you find me. Your wife's texting me. What's Justin doing right now? I tell him. I usually save that for content, dude. Yeah. Like, I need content. Yeah. I need to be able to talk about Well, we text each other. That's like, yeah, I'll talk to you when I get home. Yeah. But then there's also apps and she, come on, you guys act like you No, you're weird, bro. Hey, check your phone. Let's see who's on the phone the most. I care. Well, well, that's different. Okay. The, yeah, I'm not, Excuse me. My wife, talking, my yeah, wife and I are not there, talking no, all day you. long. My yeah. wife and I talk when we see each other when we get home. It's like yeah. we enjoy that gap, that small gap of like not seeing each other for a while. Because to your point, it gives us something to talk about. <laughs> You're texting your fucking wife play by play. No. You guys get home. I'm you not doing talk, a play by play. What are you guys talking about? Here, let me text her what she said. <laughs> yeah. No, we don't do it. But anyway, we were talking about it. And uh, it just, you know, I was thinking about when we were younger, when you left the house, you were gone. That was it. It was yeah. like, hey, I'll see you at this time. And then you just relied on each other to show up and that was it. That's you why it's so weird. You were gone and that's why it's you so were weird to me when we get when we get so like crazy about messaging like that often. It's like, dude, there was a time when you could literally go all day and not What do you mean? All that's how only always, talk to the people that were in front dude, of you. Dude, when my kid so my kid, obviously I talked about how he was sick, he was at school or whatever. I can check his location on his phone. I could text him. I know it's creepy. You know? And then I thought about him like all oh, panic. Stalkers, dude. Yeah, that's dude, what we are. I, when we were gone, our parents were like, I don't know, you know, call me at this time, I guess, or I'll call you. And if you don't answer, uh, yeah. I'll assume you're alive. Yeah. I mean, you know? do you think that's been for the good or the bad? Oh, uh, bad. Of course. Yeah. yeah. I think it I think people are you know. safer, maybe. I yeah. don't know. Well, that's a fact. It's nice to know, you know, but also, yeah, you totally intervene and, and there's a big overreach there, I would say, as yeah. a parent. Remember <laughs> when you, you guys, you go places with your parents, you guys were little, you know, maybe like you just, when you start to get a little freedom, right? 12, 13, you yeah. go to like a, a theme park and your parents are like, okay, meet here at 1 p.m. Yeah. And then poof, you're yeah. gone. Have you ever been lost? You know, have they ever wait, left wait. you somewhere? Are you asking me? Yeah. I get lost all the time, dude. Well, I know. I mean, like, As a your kid? parents, like, left you somewhere. Oh. And you're yeah. like, ah, panic. Wait, your parents actually left you? Yeah, but they didn't know. Like, wait. I was. <laughs> Hold on a second. Yeah. I was they at, forgot about you? <laughs> yeah. So, you know that. Um, <laughs> Oh, yeah, you kid. know that big flea market over here? Like, the, oh the yeah, huge where, the, one? where the theater or the where the outside uh, movie theater is? Yeah, yeah, that's uh, a terrible driving. place to get lost. Sorry, yeah, so I was I was looking at something, oh, and then I'm surprised um, you get kidnapped. Yeah, I guess like some kid that kind of was wearing the same clothes as me was like kind of near them, and they just moved on, thinking nothing of it. It's like some Home going. Alone shit, bro. <laughs> dude. <laughs> and I'm serious? like looking back, and there's nobody. And I like, how old were you? It took me an hour before I finally like reconnected with, and i had they had to like say over the loudspeaker like, really like where i was and how old were you yeah dude i was i was probably 22? like eight he's like 22 <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> mommy hey when you get older it's your parents that get lost oh yes. fuck we lost oh, dad I know. Uh, hold yeah, on so you were you crying i mean i did once i find once they finally found me i kind of broke down and you let it out you know yeah i was uh, just like why did you leave me yeah. <laughs> you know like that classic kid thing where you're just Flea like is a scary how dare place. you that's a scary place to get lost your parents too. ever lose you like that yeah. My parents, oh. we, we were at my aunt's house. We Remember, my parents have four kids and we were rowdy ass kids. So we were at my aunt's house for a big family party. And they had, you ever, you know, you try to organize your kids to get to leave at a particular time. It's almost impossible, right? right. So they're getting the kids ready, but we'll throw them in the minivan. They jump in the car, they drive off and they forgot me. 
they drove off and they totally and I was at that's man- literally Home Alone. They literally that's exactly how that happened. Yeah, look, it was <laughs> a family. That's you know? how that played out. Remember, yeah. they're getting all the everyone, the kids, and yeah. the, the and then my my aunt's like, um, your parents just drove away. I'm like, what? So they turned Dude. back around, came back. And the the story was always like, if if I was even gonna remotely like leave and go somewhere, like I was at like a grocery store. My mom would always tell me like, if you are gone, like somebody's gonna kidnap you and dye your hair, wow. and then you're never coming back. And like, wow. I'm just like oh my god, wow. you know? And I would just freak out. You know, yeah. I'd be like in the bathroom, like running, trying to find my, my mom again. <laughs> but I what worked. About, you what about you? Did, you? did your parents? My mom left me intentionally. On purpose? Remember? Yeah. Remember I told that story. <laughs> remember I told you guys that story where the cops came and everything? Remember when I was, uh, let's see here. Oh, you got kicked out. No, that's 16. This I'm talking about when I'm like four or five. Like, Whoa, you're... what? Look at, we looked this up one time. Uh, when was Nintendo? Okay. When was it released? Right. What year? It was like 1980. 1980- Nine eighty eight. So the NES. Year, so when when yeah. when Zelda the game Zelda came out. Okay, no, it was it was like eighty six. The so, NES. Yeah, it yeah. it's like eighty six. Wow, that, that eighty five. Eighty five. Eighty five. Holy cow. Okay. Yeah. So when that came out, Zelda Zelda for, gets released, which I think is eighty six. So this, the, this I'm five. My mom leaves me home to go grocery shopping and tells a five year old, "Don't go anywhere." Right. And so you're at home. I'm at home, and then somebody, my neighbor, like four houses down on our block comes over and knocks on the door and he's got the new Zelda game and wants to come over and play. And being like a normal five-year-old, I totally forgot what my mom told me to stay home. Okay. And just went and then got caught up playing games. Oh, you left the house? Oh yeah. For like hours. Oh, And when I finally came out of his house to come back home, there was like cops all on our street and our driveway. And my mom was like hysterically crying and running up and down the street. And like, now what did she tell the, the cops? So, okay. I don't remember any of that. Like, I left them that, home alone. that memory is like served me as like for most yeah. of my like young childhood or an adult, young adulthood of like, you know, I fucked up in that situation. That yeah. you did. The- yeah. Yeah. It wasn't until I got old, like a fucking grown ass man. I did the math and I went like, I was five. What the fuck is she doing? Leave me home at five. Yeah. 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 Like I max is four right now. I'm yeah. like, are you kidding me? Like I can't. Did you imagine? Dude, we're free range. Cool. Like that too. That is that is like crazy. Listen, if you grew me. up in the '80s, that you're just tough. Like if you survive that, you're not a pussy. You know oh, what yeah. I mean? Like, That's like just, a lot of kids would have died right there. You made it. You know what I'm yeah, saying? You did all right. You know what though? Hey, by the way, you know what the the science on that says? Where when little kids, when their parents do something that's completely irresponsible or terrible. Little kids always internalize it. They always internalize it as it's their fault because that's your caretaker. I, bro, I think it and was it's like, a survival it mechanism. It wasn't but a couple years ago that like I realized that wasn't my fault. Oh, because you didn't do the math. Yeah, I just never cared to. I just assumed that I was a bad <laughs> wow. kid for doing shit like that. You know what I'm saying? Like, not- You know, when I figured things out is when I yeah. tell you guys stories, you know, and I'm like, oh, yeah, my mom threw a shoe at us at the groceries around. And I'm like, what the fuck? Why should she yeah. throw shoes at us? Oh, I know. Courtney's always store. asking, what was your mom doing? Yeah. You know, like, <laughs> like, is she doing a bunch of errands? And she was like, no, she's probably at home. Like, I was like thinking, I'm like, what was she doing? You <laughs> yeah, know, we like, I had to walk miles. We, we watched ourselves for sure. And we, the, the when I went back, I went by that neighborhood one time, which by the way, it's like a, it's a ghetto now. It's in Modesto, which is like the armpit of California, yeah, yeah. right? So, and it's like this shitty little town where we're at and like just a run down neighborhood. And as a kid, like you, you make your perception of distance and size yeah, of course. is so off, you know? And I, w- I remember going back there and then driving the route of walking to school, uh, the school, the middle school that I used to walk my sister and I to, and it was like, you know, two miles. We had to cross a four lane fucking main yeah. road. <laughs> it's, you bro, were in, bro. bro, I was third grade. She was first grade. Oh it's fucking God. bananas. Oh my God. Yeah. And I'm like, I did the drive and I'm like, this is cr- every day, you know? And then I remember, then the, these memories come back of like when I got grounded one time really bad. I had it, it was in fourth grade. Yeah. And I was walking home from this long walk from school and got distracted. And, you know, a kid, I mean, that just, that's how a kid's brain works at that age like that. Like not even thinking like I have to come straight yeah. home. It's like some kid goes, oh, come over. I got the yeah. new vanilla ice tape. Let's go listen to it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So I, you know, cut a left and then go hang out for an hour <laughs> or two. And then my mom's again frantic because I didn't come At home. At least she knew trouble. not yeah. to take candy so, from a guy in a van. I guess that's j- what But I'm with. thinking that at, at that age and, and, and when I was younger, even, even like as a teenager going like, oh man, I was a bad kid. I did all this stuff. But then now as a dad and I think like I would never expect you were Max, a normal kid. Yeah, I would never expect Max to like walk two miles, cross a four lane highway, oh and like God. like figure it out. You know, what I'm and uh, not think that somebody would go like, "Hey, come over and play with yeah. me, kid." And you would be like, "Okay," and just do that because he you, would do that. I told you guys a story about like <laughs> yeah. when we were at the grocery store, my mom and my brother was always a terror. 
And he ran off and he was knocking stuff off the aisles. And <laughs> I'm chasing him because I'm the oldest, right? Get your brother. And I'm chasing him. And then I see my mom's shoe, whoosh, you know, across the aisle. Boom, hit him and he falls down because she <laughs> had to stop him. And this lady gave my mom the dirtiest look. And my mom grabbed the shoe and pointed it at her. And she's like, mind your business. Now, <laughs> when I was a kid, when I was a kid, I was like, my mom's awesome. You know, yeah. looking back, I'm like, oh my God, mom, what were you doing? Yeah, yeah. She's like, you tried managing four kids at the grocery store. I, you know, I think Fair enough. I just I think- imagine her practicing out in the backyard. Just- before, Bro, before, before, having, a kid, before yeah. having a kid, you can't help but judge those adults that yeah. you see do that. Then after you have a kid, you realize totally it, and you just feel bad. You totally say, like, I'm just like, oh, man. Oh, yeah, yeah. dude. You ever <laughs> see kids on a leash? When people are you know, walking yeah. around, you're like, how could they do that? Now I have like a two-year-old. I'm like, oh, where do I buy one? Yeah, that you was know? a trend for a minute. It, yeah. it it went crazy for a minute, and then it went. I think after now a they make people, backpacks with this with this because they, they make do, it but less it's still it, it was leashy. It was really popular for <laughs> definitely a leash for a minute, <laughs> yeah. and then it kind of fell off because I think people started to realize like how ridiculous that looks. Like your kid is on a leash, you know that, right? Yeah, like, that's I don't no matter, feed them no matter if it's a monkey backpack or not, it's still a fucking yeah. leash. You know how you draw it up, tie so, it to a pole. Yeah, so I think it like <laughs> play. it fell out of favor for after a while. Like, <laughs> I think it was just like yeah, like trying to get off. It, this is know? how this is how it would have tear my little my brother was like hanging off of the balcony. He, ah! he was young. He was like three, and they make those buckles so you can't. Because my mom had one for him. She had to though. My brother would literally jump off. Cl- He'll do anything crazy. And his she son had is one like of those. This. I didn't think those came out till way later. No, no, she was probably one of the first. Oh wow! <laughs> she saw it. She's like, I need. She probably this. invented it. Yeah. He was. Listen, you don't understand. His son, by the way, it's so fun to watch my brother go through this with his son. Yeah. If we put his son in here right now, if you took your eyes off from two seconds, he'd be hanging off the lights He's or something. Like something very dangerous. China shop. And laughing. Yeah. That was my brother. Yeah. So she had the leash on and he figured out how to take the childproof thing on. And my mom is not paying attention. You know, she's shopping. She's watching this over. My brother took it off and attached it to something else. And she's, you know, <laughs> she looked, That's lost gangster. him. Where is he? I like that. And then we eventually found him. I so, like that. Anyway, so uh, here's what's interesting to me. I thought... Cause I've, I, you guys both can't have dairy right now, okay? Cause you guys have food. Can we have like a moment? Yeah. Well, it's okay. Okay. It's very sad. How are you yeah. doing right now? <laughs> I'm, yeah. I'm angry. You well, look, I was gonna. Yeah, s- you look really miserable. I was yeah. gonna say he looks angry, but you complain way more. So, yeah. are you? <laughs> what's your challenge with it? Because I, I thought- so uh, what what I'm really blown away at. Because uh, I, I mean, I've openly admitted my ice cream addiction and shit like yeah. that that I like, and I have a. You sweet don't like dairy free ice cream? <laughs> no. Uh, what I didn't realize yeah. was all the little things like, I mean, like there's, I've, there's these crackers that I would have and there's a uh, barbecue sauce that I would use with chicken and, everything. The, and I didn't realize how much dairy is snuck into so many things. And I didn't think that I was like, in my mind, I think like, uh, in my diet, I go like ice cream, cheese, like that's the main dairy that gets in there. Every once in a while I have some sort of, I have it maybe in my coffee or you know, but rarely, you know, or yogurt occasionally, cream cheese occasionally. They add it to everything for but then, feel. Yeah, and for, but when yeah. you start to like actually yeah. look at every single thing and it's like, oh shit, this has dairy too. And then I go, wow, I was actually consuming way more than I, I thought mm. I was. And the, and I don't know, I haven't talked to Cabral about this or not, but the first initial part sucks. I've had headaches. My psoriasis is worse right now than it than it was before and i feel like i'm like i can't eat anything like it's a it's a shitty huh. beginning right now so this is interesting because that uh that happens with die off but i don't know why avoiding dairy would cause die so die off is when you're treating like a bacterial overgrowth mm-hmm. and when the bacteria die or let's say there's a fungal overgrowth mm-hmm. and that dies it sets off toxins and so people will get this uh what's it called Herx, herxheimer effect or something like that maybe doug could look it up it's where you actually feel worse before I don't know why avoiding an intolerance would cause that, except right, for right. maybe your immune system not having something to attack because it's constantly being bombarded with dairy. Yeah, doesn't have dairy, and so it's become more hyper vigilant before it calms down. Would be my guess. But so here's a mistake. I was talking. Katrina and I were talking about this last night, and she because she was asking me, she could tell she's like, you know, are, are you doing all right? What's wrong with you? So that I said, ah, you know, I think I'm at a bit off more than I could chew right now. Because I also paired that with uh, caffeine and kratom right now of pulling off too. Why? Oh, so I've well, been, yeah. yeah well, you I, have you're a right maniac. There. That's because this is part of me going like I probably should oh, do all. A little of, bit? Yeah, I no. was. Well, I was like the when I because okay. I was the, my attitude is like this. Yeah. Well, I'm gonna go all. I'm I'm cutting out this dairy. I, I've been inconsistent with my training and dieting. Was mm. here's a good time for me to really ramp up and I like fucking 180 everything and I was like. Probably not. Yeah, you make you terrible. Yeah, yeah so I, so yeah, What's wrong with you? reintroduced the, the caffeine yeah. back in, and I'm like, okay, I'm 
not going to do that right now, which is probably where the headaches probably came from. Yeah. The headaches yeah. didn't make sense. See, that's the Herxheimer effect. But that's from, uh, look, people get fever from that. I didn't even realize that. But that's after you kill like bacteria and stuff like that. Yeah. Now, what about you, Justin? You, you obviously it was very He's depressing. Just angry. Yeah. Because no, you, what are you going to eat? You know, well, that's all well, you Yeah. Eat. And it's like uh, my kids are flaunting it in front of my face. Oh, oh my God. Wow. You do that. They're taunting you. Yeah. Like, yeah. So, that's like, uh, I have this huge, like, cannonball of mimolette, right? And, like, I, I started to like, I was eating a bunch of it. And then before I, I just decided to not eat dairy anymore. And then uh, I was like cooking burgers for everybody and, and then realizing, oh yeah, I can't put any cheese in there. And then I'm like serving it up and then Ethan goes and he's grabbing all this like expensive cheese I have there. And he's like stacking it, you know, on top of his burger and then like, you know, shaving it in, in the salad. And like, anyways, it's just, uh, yeah, I love I'm, your kids. I'm, I'm like, and I, I like, I like that they're kind of messing with me with that because it's like it's annoying to be that guy that's like, oh, you know, dairy, yeah. you know, like, <laughs> oh, I'm, 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 I'm the bummer, hey, hey, I'm the bummer that, in the group. You, you know? feel that low key, like, dig yeah, 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 like, yeah, <laughs> right there. I didn't yeah. want to be that guy, hey. but I'm that guy right now. So I'm owning it, and it's been what six days or whatever. Yeah, right, right. Uh, it is what it is. I've actually had better acid reflux. Like, oh, yeah, so that's a big deal for you. It is, and that's what's why I'm even more angry angry because i'm like it's well, working yeah it's, <laughs> it's working. Bad, it's working you were hoping it didn't work yeah so <laughs> i actually have to go all the way through this thing you yeah because your least, acid reflex was bad it was it, and it got really bad and i told you guys at the beginning of this year it was just like compiling it was like the worst it's ever been so here's the kicker with this is or not kicker this is the, the i mean maybe the light at the end of the tunnel although dairy oftentimes isn't this but i think you especially or both you guys should be okay with this once you get the immune system to tamp down, you seal the gut because the inflammation is gone. Yeah. Then you can reintroduce and you probably, you may not have any more reactions and you go back to having dairy. Yeah. Although dairy often is one that I'm people can on that. never go back to uh, because you guys have always had dairy, never really had an issue. But it's just like an intolerance. It's not like I'm like allergic to it. Dude. <laughs> yeah, you know like, what I mean? Like, this is all bullshit. He's still bro. in denial. He's so bullshit. in denial. He's like, <laughs> I just would be happy. Well, I, if I, hey, okay. I'll just be happy if every once in a while I can. Like one of the things I now have to do is uh, again. Obviously, I know a whey shake is is dairy, uh, but that's kind of like my go to thing at night when I need protein. You go to the Organifi. Yeah, so now I'm like on. That's the all right. Yeah. It is. I mean, and Organifi by far is the best vegan protein. Vegan proteins are gross. Yeah, they, they are. Time. They are. And I already went through all the 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 bone broth already. So yeah. I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm hoping that we still have some of that yeah. left in here. But I I've been on Organifi now. And I'm so used to having like a nice like whey shake at the end of the yeah. night, and it's just. Are you now? Is your the, digestion better with the Organifi? So I I don't have digestive issues. Oh, it's all skin. Yeah, it's yeah. all skin for yeah. me. It's never been. Yeah. I've never had uh, any real major gut stuff, unless I'm like way off the rate. Like yeah. if I'm eating really. Yeah, bad. Organifi is the most successful vegan protein I've had w that I've recommended to people because when I recommend uh, non dairy protein powders, especially if I want a nice amino acid profile. A, they're hard to find, and B, when I do, they literally taste like someone mowed the lawn and threw the lawn <laughs> yeah, clippings yeah, in the back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but that's the one. No, that they're, the, they're the best. I just okay. So and then this is totally and there's no artificial sweetener. Nit which, nitpicking is that I really like Organifi stuff with uh, tarty stuff like fruit, like uh, like strawberries and blueberries. So we do and, vanilla with it. Yeah, I just like I so oh, I can yeah. make my own. But when at night when I have my protein shake, you want I, a peanut butter. I, I like savory stuff. Yeah, 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 I want peanut butter and banana. You know, is what I want, and yeah. that don't go good with to me. And I've had it; like it gets by, but I, it's not the same. They thing. make good cookies. The Organifi protein powder makes really good cookies. Was it you that made them, or uh, was that someone else? No, I've Katrina and I make, but we normally use whey when we do the. Cookies. Someone else made them. Choki's mom, I that's think. That's it. That, that's okay. She was that the party? She used Organifi. Yes. yes. Do you remember oh, those really? balls? Do you That's remember those right. like protein balls or whatever mm -hmm. that we had at the was it Fruit the, the Christmas huh? party? Yes, the Christmas party. Those were Organifi. Oh, I didn't know that. They were amazing. Mm -hmm. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, because Katrina asked me. She's like, "Do you want me to make that?" I'm like, ah, "I don't really like all the because we make peanut butter balls, all the different cookies, yeah. but we normally use the whey because I think whey just goes better with like when you're baking." Yeah, but I haven't. I didn't know that. Yeah, well, I'll ask Choki yeah. to hook up the the recipe on that. So I want to uh, change direction real quick and comment on uh, just this real short because I know people can get irritated with this, but uh, there's a lot of I've we got I've gotten some messages. People want to know our opinions on. Uh, Vivek Ramaswamy and how he's what he's communicating oh, yeah. right now uh -huh. and kind of what's happening. He's kind of this rising star. So far, we've heard the the Republican uh, primary debate, the first one, 
Um, so what do you guys think? What do you guys think about that guy? You know, what's interesting about, uh, actually I'll, I'll, I'll say mean, one comment. Yeah, go ahead. What, you know how people are attacking him? This is what I find interesting. The, the, the attack that seems to be sticking is literally in, under the umbrella of he sounds too good to be he's, true. Yeah, he's too smooth. What well, a crazy. He's saying all it's not the that things crazy. I want to hear. It's not that crazy when you think about how we, what happened with Obama. <laughs> yeah. 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 But people still love him. There's a definite comparison. And people comparison are still going to love Vivek too, I think. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I, I mean, I think he'll be, he'll, he's, uh, no, no, for sure. Out of all the Republican candidates, the, the most well spoken, and I think uh, addresses most of the 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 points that I think that the party wants them to to address. Like he's not more, the establishment. Yeah, he's, they were they were. I mean, when you saw their positions on uh, Ukraine, for example. No, I'm talking about the, the ba I'm talking one. about the Republican base, not yes. the fucking establishment. I'm talking yeah. about people. Isn't that weird? Yeah, he's speaking to what totally. the most people want to. He's the first one to raise his hand with Ukraine and stuff like yeah. that. Like, so I think he's. I mean, he's and he's what he's doing with by not bashing Trump and actually supporting him, because when you really, really un, when you unpack what he said about Trump, it's really like okay, he said in this uh, the last decade or last what he's or what do you say? What he's, year? he's the best president in the last. Uh, the time frame he's referring to yes. is George Bush, Obama, Biden, and Trump. Yeah. And if you're a Republican, everybody knows that Bush was fucking the worst, right? Yeah, so because yeah. all the war shit, so that's a out. And then you're not going to have a Republican guy support Biden or Obama for yeah. sure. So he's not really <laughs> yeah. saying much by saying that, but it comes off. It's you're just, not including so the he's, Reagan years. Yeah, he's very intelligent. He's very tactical. He's winning over everybody. But I think the like, so I, my, I have my, I have several of my family members that I do talk politics with that are like kind of like hardcore conservative. And their concern about him is that he's going to be like an Obama. He's going to get in office and he's going to do a lot of things different than what, he's, what he said, than what he's saying. Yeah. That's the biggest, so, uh, that's the biggest critique I mean, that yeah. I think is sticking the lack of experience. Although I think that's going to play in his favor because mm -hmm. everybody else up there has been in there forever and has done what? You it's know, just nothing. refreshing to hear people finish sentences. Yeah. I, mean, that's, <laughs> I know. That's now, now Trump nice. played really smart. Uh, politics because he's so ahead he didn't participate which makes him look like i'm not going to talk with you guys you guys are all so low or whatever and not only that but i'm going to run my interview at the same time and make sure that my base doesn't even get a chance so to what's your you so what's your speculation on what he's going to do when the when the the party gets narrowed down to then he'll debate so you think so there's rumors yeah. that they think he won't even then even. yeah well okay that's a good point it there's a chance there's pulling. a chance that he may like he pull this like yeah. move the whole way through and be like why yeah yeah, I don't know. I don't know. You yeah, know, I don't think he'd do well. You, you know what know, I think is Vivek. really interesting is that uh, he, Trump, in 24 hours got o over $4 million in campaign funds after he got that mugshot. No, it's up higher than that. It's six now. I well, saw... it went in 24 hours. It was oh, a, yeah, oh, okay. okay. First, I was going to say- Which like is a I... record. Yeah, I just saw that this morning on like how much it. it how much you it, had to know that he like even if he didn't need to take it, he was like opting in for that. Right? Oh, because it, it's like perfect like uh, press. It, it like, plays you know, right into his narrative of being yeah. this outsider and right it's crazy backfire. I'm the underdog. Like he's getting a lot of new supporters. I guess. Like, do you think the black he? Community. Do you think he had the the foresight to know that it was gonna that play out that way? For I him? think he had a plan. I think they were like when they take that mud shot, you be ready. To put this out, this out, and that out, yeah. and, let's gen and that's exactly what they did. As soon as that mugshot was taken, he sent out a blast to his followers, to his supporters, with the picture of it, and it's like, this is you know the, the political um, witch hunt, whatever. You know, give me money, I'm going to fight the system, and he got so much money. I always wonder if it's like really the the candidate or the person that we're talking about, or it's really like this team of people that is really all of it. Yeah. Like, do you, you, like you interpret it as like, oh, he had this foresight. And oh no. He, he thought do this, do this, or did he's got a good, he's got a team. Yeah. That of course. They go like, of this is what we're going to do. You're going to get this. We're going to take advantage of this. We're going to put this out. This is how we're going to spend. This is how we're going to get yeah. ahead of it. This is how we're, it's going to, so, yeah, that's what I think. I don't yeah. think it's them. I, I, I'll i say uh, he's right now in the primary, he's untouchable. Um, he actually, his support with minorities exploded recently which would kill the the Democrats if that were to stick, although it almost never sticks. Would you say we'll it went 8 to 21 or eight something? 8 to 20 yeah, percent. That's yeah. a lot. Yeah, huge. But, I mean, does it actually stick when they vote? We'll see what happens. Um, he's still super divisive. So can he win a general? Who knows? I think if he made Vivek his, his running mate, that would be interesting. That would be really And it sounds like that's what Vivek is, is it this? To. Is it this October when you took the October surprise or is it next October? Uh, it's next year, right? Yeah. 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 That's when we should expect like the weird they're stuff. They're narrowing there. down who's going to be the candidate. 
you know, going into next year. Yeah. So we'll see. We'll see what happens. It'll be very yeah. interesting. I mean, are you following? I'm not following it that closely. I'm paying a little bit of attention to it, but I'm not following that closely. Yeah. I like, I like to just see what the strategies are and kind of what's, you know, uh, what they're, how they're playing the game and look at the big picture. Yeah. Because if I get too invested, I just want to pull my hair out. And, football you know. season starting for me, so I don't really give a yeah, shit. So yeah, so they don't care anymore. That's where I'm I should going. Get into Politics football. are sports for nerds, bro. Yeah. I've been saying that forever. That's I all know. I'm saying. So. I should get into football, huh? Just you should. It would, I think is it less would, stressful? It, way less stressful. Okay. Yeah, way yeah. less stressful. There's, right. not, there's not as much on the line when a team loses. Yeah, I know. You know what I'm saying? And so, They're and, not trying to piss you off. And even when they do corrupt yeah. bad shit, it's just like, oh, it's not that big of a deal. Yeah, yeah. So like, oh, fuck, those are my rights. You just fucked with it. Oh, no. Yeah, it's like you're not going to get those. It's not that serious. the football was not that serious. Uh, fully saying, or whatever. We could get over this. Wasn't that a thing? Yeah. Point, yeah. The football. I, the paper the money was cool. Andrew, are you doing the fantasy league with the boys? <laughs> yeah, we just need numbers. Okay. Okay. I'm oh, no, they were trying well, to recruit us. Okay. So explain. Like, I got time for explain that. Explain fantasy. I've never played fantasy football. You, what okay, the well, hell? No, 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 I'm not going to defend that. That's not, that's like. That's, it's like it? Dungeons and Dragons yeah, is, uh, for is, jocks. Yeah. Really? That's, that's yeah. a good way to say it. Yeah. Yeah. So it's like, yeah, I have this wizard and I have this. Um, you draft. Know, you, you have a bishop. You, you have a team. You create. You, you the memes a team. around. By the way, the memes around fantasy football are the best. I think. Like, there's so many great memes and things. That so go what do you do? Do you want to create a team with players? There's from ten. Different- of, so there's ten to twelve of us. Okay. So right. if we, we were to play with guys. Them. We would all go around and you you would draft players. So we we figure out a way to go the order. You're first. I'm second. Right. Justin's third. Right. Doug's fourth. And you're up. And you get to pick any player in the NFL to be on your team. For each position. For, well, yeah, yes. But it's your decision on how order you go. You can go running back, first yeah, quarterback. Yeah, first I'm going to pick. Okay. So, there's, so there's strategy. And then like, how do you win? So every you, week, you get points those guys game, have ways yeah. to score points. So a quarterback throws a touchdown, he gets six points. Oh. If a running back runs for 10 yards, he gets a point. If oh. a wide receiver catches a pass, it's a point. Like so there's all these ways. You to- start whoever you want for that week. And so based off of that is how many points you're wow, going to get. Wow, that's yeah. stupid. It's, it's actually I totally pretty don't smart. want to do that. It's brilliant, actually. It's actually really. It's, a lot I of money mean, off that. Now people dude. bet money. Yeah. Oh, okay. That's lots better. of money. Oh, yeah. been around. You know, that's you know, this has been around for a long, well before the internet and stuff. That people used to do this by hand at the newspaper. You would open up every Sunday, and and kids have been doing this for a long time. It blew up once the internet yeah. hit, and then like you could create this thing where we can kind of all... gives you something to do while you're watching the games. So I, I get that. It's like. I think it, it reminds me of when we used to watch the Super Bowl and you'd make all these like really weird random bets on like uh, oh. whether or not the uh like you the know coin the, the coin toss or yeah, yeah just like random things would happen in the game and you'd like bet on it and it just made it more kind of fun. I mean, we talked the other day about Balco, right? And we talked about what that did for baseball, like how huge that was, right? Yeah. The whole home run race. Fantasy football it has to I would love to see like some stats on like what it's done. It is for sure elevated football because it, it what it does well, i can see why it takes someone like me who would consider himself a, a football fan and now you want to watch it all all of it yeah. yes and i would never do that as a kid growing up you watch your yeah. team that's yeah. all you care about you don't pay attention to anybody else's that's, stuff maybe a little bit but not I like like more where that. when you draft players on in the entire league you're invested in every and there's money on the line you're invested in every single game. So now I want to watch. Dude, what's, game. What, you know, yeah. what you just, you brought up baseball. I saw, I didn't see this for a long time, and I forgot how crazy of a disparity this was. The pictures of Barry Bonds and Mark McGuire and who else was it? Jose Canseco or Sammy Sosa. Yeah. Oh, so when they like in the early part of their career and then towards the end. Bro, it's it's so crazy. I feel like, hey, okay. why did their heads grow? Who's the most crazy? I think Sammy Sosa looked the craziest. Why, oh, hold on. The why did their, he- their actual skulls yeah. grow? They're, they're, yeah, exactly. They're, they're they were, they were on growth, growth, growth too. Yeah. They never proved that stuff because you can't, you can't test for you it. You can't test for it, but they were on growth hormone too. Like yeah. the before and after looks yeah, ridiculous. Yeah, that's the only way your skull grows, bro. Your skull doesn't grow from testosterone. No. Yeah, it does from growth hormone though. So that I mean that he that turned was into a mutant. That's man. the part that, that they crazy. never talk about, or they couldn't even really like in the Balco scam or that. They can't they can't talk about that case. They can't prove it, so they don't even bring it up. But you don't your bones don't grow like that. All those those guys grew like yeah, they're bones, and that doesn't happen unless you're taking growth. Oh hormone. Oh my god! So, yeah, so they took it in combination with. They that. Can, I think they can test for growth hormone now. Maybe you could look it up, Doug. I think they need they now have tests. Maybe like well, if I would yeah. And yeah, an abnormal sure amount. figured that out. Like IGF one or something like that. But I think they can You're actually test nerd, I for <laughs> well, I no idea. Thanks. Yeah. Speaking of science, while Doug looks that up, I was reading more uh interesting studies on terpenes, which so terpenes are compounds in plants that give them their scent, 
but there's also um, or flavor too, or flavor. But there's there's reasons why they have these terpenes. Some of them are to are antimicrobial, or will fight certain funguses, or will attract certain insects that'll pollinate them, or repel certain insects that tend to eat them. So they're present in in plants. Now, why am I bringing this up? When you look at hemp or cannabis, which is its cousin, and you look at the effects of cannabinoids, obviously the most common one being THC, but then there's CBD, which is common. There's lots of other cannabinoids, CBC and CBN and other cannabinoids. When you look at their effects, if you don't look at the terpenes, you're not going to get the full picture. In fact, I just read this. Terpenes oftentimes have effects like cannabinoids themselves, and it's probably terpenes that determines whether or not a strain makes you sleepy or energized or anxious or creative and not necessarily the cannabinoids. It's so funny because this mm. explains what we've kind of known for a long time with how people would say like, you'd hear people say like, oh man, I can have, I love sour diesel for X, Y, and yes. Z. You're like, oh, I like this strain. And you would hear people compare two strains that would both be considered a sativa plant. Yeah, that totally different. That Yeah, but yeah, they'd have these different effects. So I think it highlights something that we were kind of onto for forever of like knowing that like there's certain strains, if you're looking for certain attributes, oh, I don't want to be sleepy, I want to have energy, but I want to be jittery, like I want this feel like there's certain uh, plants or strains that you've connected if you've been smoking for a long period mm -hmm. of time that, oh, those, I like the way that feels, but it's less to do what we know now with the sativa yeah. plant or the actual strain and more so to do with the Now, terpenes. why is this important? Because there's so many products on the market now that'll have uh, CBD and CBD has got its own effects and, and potential benefits, anti-inflammatory, euphoria, sleep, enzeolytic, right? Helps with anxiety, but almost nobody is selling a full spectrum cannabinoid based product that's high in CBD, meaning they take the whole plant, they extract the efficacious oils, but what's also in there are all the other cannabinoids and the terpenes as well. So this is probably one of the reasons why, like we work with Ned, when people use CBD products and then use Ned, they're like, okay, I really feel this. Yeah. Is the CBD that much higher? And it's like, no, it's because of all these other things in the plant that you didn't get with your just CBD gummies or whatever you so The delivery of it's just better. Yeah. It's not only that, but the terpenes activate the receptors more. So CB1 receptors can get activated by terpenes. Yeah. There's a, an entourage effect with how they interact with each other. So if you're looking for, you know, beneficial effects of CBD, you're better off getting something that's got all that other stuff. You're going to get more of an effect, more of a benefit. And there's a balancing effect. They show that it uh, it's more calming or stimulating. It's more of a balanced effect when you include all of those things versus just the... I mean, this is isolated. When, when when is it that the way it's found in nature isn't better for us? Yeah, I mean, seriously, when is it? When when is there? Give me an example of something that we have figured out and like, oh, when we mash this and change this, it's healthier. If you want a super strong acute effect, yeah, that maybe concentrate. Yeah, yeah. yeah, if that, but that's you know rarely ever yeah. what you should be doing. Yeah, I mean, that's something like, to like stop pain immediately or something. Did you guys yeah, know the drug it. metformin? It's been around for a long time. Yeah was based off of a plant that people had used for a long time. Were they, wasn't it fighter pilots that were using that first? No, so that's no, no, a different, no, 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 no. That's not that's, metformin. That's, that's uh, 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 it's another M. That's no, uh, no. Damn. It's a, it's a <laughs> stimulant. Just, yeah. Modafinil? Modafinil. 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 That's Modafinil. what I was thinking. Doug, look up uh, origins of metformin. Berberine, don't. maybe? Uh, no, 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 it's another plant. By the way, the NFL the does do- a, Yeah, but you see it? 24 to 48 yeah, hours. Yeah, <laughs> And they get a notification. You're going to get tested in two days. Cool. No, No growth hormone tomorrow. So yeah. yeah. Mm. So you really can't test for each. No, that's and that's although what, it's not a huge performance enhancing. No, substance. but if you pair it with uh the all the testosterone they're taking, yeah, and with yeah, you pair it with that, it's gonna make a big difference. Yeah, so, so uh, what about especially metformin? You, at that level, recovery and stuff. So metformin is a synthetic derivative of French lilac. That's an herbal plant traditionally employed in Europe for diabetes treatment. So it is a they take uh, they took what was effective in French lilac, which you probably could buy now if you want to improve your blood sugar. And then they created metformin, which by the way, metformin has been around a long time. It's one of the oldest drugs uh, that's been around. And so it, we know what it does, what it doesn't do. It's one of the safer substances if you are looking to control blood sugar. Aren't they? So I know biohackers are all into uh, yeah. that, but like be beyond it just being good for- So I took metformin. Okay. Yeah. Because we have access to unlimited peptides. So you guys know I take everything. Yeah. So I said, hey, well, I what's try the, this. the other benefits to it? Uh, wait, metformin is considered a peptide? 
No. Wait. I don't know. I, I got I got it from our people. <laughs> but I know that they, I they. I didn't know it was a pesticide. They, they have metformin, um, so you can use metformin. So I tried it, and it made me really tired. And I think what it did is it brought my blood sugar too low, and I okay. started getting kind of lethargic. Mm. There's longevity effects. This is why why hackers will take That's it. That's what I've heard. Yeah, yeah. but yeah. then there's also potential issues with the muscle building signal and the mitochondria. Um, so if you don't need it, I don't know why you would take it. But What's going to happen don't. with like all these biohacking people will only make it to like 69, 72. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, cause we haven't had like a whole generation of like, yeah. you know, biohackers. Yeah. All these guys that spend their whole life doing all this crazy stuff. And then they end up like living one year. Longer. I love how they yeah. say their, their real age is like 20 years younger <laughs> Dave than them. Like, yeah. yeah. Okay. Metformin reduces plasma glucose and has been shown to increase glucagon like peptide secretion. So yeah, I don't know. We, I so, mean, if you wait, go to H, so, look, it, so it so it triggers GLP one. Is that? Is yeah, that I don't think it's actually a peptide itself. No, but they they do. So if you go to mphormones.com, uh, that's our that's our link, right? mphormones.com. Mm -hmm. You can fill out a form, and then they'll they'll these are doctors that will work with you with peptides, potential hormone replacement like testosterone, growth hormone boosting peptides. And then they also work with uh, things like metformin. What are you, so okay? Tell me, your, I know you're the one who's tested almost everything out. What is what is your stack look like right now? And what's your favorite that you're that you're using right now for for building? I mean, for whatever for build. No, no, I'm just gonna give you the categories. Okay, for building, ibutamorin is crazy. I get really strong on it. Um, the sleep I got on that was excellent. my appetite does go up, so it's not it does boost growth hormone, and so growth hormone helps with fat loss. However, your appetite goes up so much with it, I don't think it's a great cutting peptide but if you want to build and get strong uh i get like i'll gain five to six maybe eight pounds of lean body mass on it and my strength goes through the roof so i love that motsi still love it still absolutely love it so yeah, like although that you do that in cycles remind um, me what motsi is for is, that, is was, that a nootropic is that no yeah, it's a, yeah it's a i thought it was energy a, I thought it was an atropic. It's not an atropic. No, no. So Mott C, um, your muscles release when they're when when you exercise, and it it, it really tells the mitochondria to ramp up its function, and so you get better blood sugar. You get more. I just puts me in a good mood. Oh, yeah. I took that's that's like a good mood with energy, the red light right, right now. I was, well, I was, I was. Uh, yeah. For, yeah, I stopped the Mott C because you do it in, in cycles, and then you uh, stop for a while. Okay. So I liked Mott C. I took Epitalon. I don't know what that did. I don't know if that did anything, but that's supposed to lengthen. Telomeres? I don't know. Anything you didn't like? Oh, uh, yeah. I tried, um, God, what was that uh, peptide I did, Doug? Do you remember the one that was, uh, it was a norepinephrine serotonin dopamine reuptake inhibitor. And it's supposed to be a nootropic. Oh, that's the one he took too much. You remember Zap, but not the name of it. Yeah, yeah, I remember what it did. But it makes me crazy. <laughs> it's a basic ass name yeah. too, right? No, it's, it's not. Uh, it's it Tesselfensin. Yeah, Tesselfensin. Yeah. No, I took the dose that they gave me, and it literally made me feel crazy. Yeah. Then I went off. Then I tried a lower dose, and it just affects my sleep. Not good. It kills my appetite, um, which I guess some people like. But I don't like the way it makes me feel. I think yeah. I might already have a lot of dopamine, so it's just too what much. What are you? Are you using your? I'm going to be trying. Actually, I'm going to be trying a new one, the NAD. Uh, oh, that's not a peptide, but yeah, NAD is good. With in combination with Cmax this is the one I've been uh, having the best success with in terms. of- I like Cmax too. Yeah, just my memory recall. And, oh, I'm and trying sharpness. Solank right now. What? Solank. What's that? Solank is another um, peptide for brain function. It also boosts brain derived neuro neurotropic factor. But unlike unlike C Max, okay. yeah, C Max is more of a stimulant. Yeah, Solank is enzyolytic, hmm. but both of them have similar effects uh, with in terms of like memory recall and all that stuff. So I've been so, taking that. So Tessa Fenson, you weren't that much of a fan. No, it made of. me feel crazy. Although I a lot of people, what about, love it. I didn't care for Dihexa really either. I didn't notice anything on Dihexa. Yeah, I didn't notice that one as much. But the yeah. reviews on it are crazy. Uh, Some people just love that. Absolutely yeah, I remember right. they they recommended it as like one of the favorites like that, yeah. but I I didn't feel and maybe that's because I felt too much from CMAX that that like felt that that was like because I noticed a difference yeah. when I take oh, that. Oh, you know what? That's what I got to talk about. Mm -hmm. K the combination of BPC-157 uh, and KPV BPC, yeah. oral for gut health. That's the one I've been Holy doing cow. Is yeah. that the one that I'm supposed to do for my psoriasis that you said? The, on a cream. Okay. Yes. See they if they can, can give it? you. Yes. Okay. See if they can give you topical. And so let me hold on. bro, it's, you it's, gotta. I can't believe sorry. you haven't done this. Well, I want to. Okay, so I'm gonna do the my protocol first. I don't want to do everything at once. I want to do that first and see how much my psoriasis improves. And then then I'll then I'll add that in. There. Bro, I don't do the same time. If I you look up the data on KPV, well, let me write it down so I don't forget. BPC one five seven slash. No, KPV. I know that one. Well, give me the other one. KPV. KPV. Oh, yeah, but KPV topical. 
Yes. Right? If you look at the data on KPV, on psoriasis and eczema, it's crazy. And uh, BPC also for psoriasis and eczema. Mm-hmm. Is crazy. Oh, do I need to have the oral, huh? Not the, not the, because I have the injectable BPC. See if you can get it topical because you want to put it on no, your no, 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 BPC now. BPC. I have inject, I, th- I have injectable, but you're talking about the oral one. No, uh, for me, for my gut. Well, if I'm doing it for psoriasis, wouldn't it be better if I did it with that? Topical. Top. See if they can put it all in a cream. Okay. Yeah, see if they make it all in a cream. I think you might only be able to get KPV that way, but if you can get BPC, uh, got all these letters. BBC. So, well, and if, if I can't, I know. Apologize to the audience for being selfish right here, but if I don't do this, I won't remember. Uh, BBC. If, if I do that and they don't do topical, then, then continue the to pill- do the injection. Okay, then still because it's still systemic. Okay, and then do the KPV cream uh, on your skin. But anyway, the oral cap, the or the capsules. Should I take the capsules for gut health. Uh, remarkable. It's re- now it took a couple weeks for me to really start to notice. Mm-hmm. But my gut is like so much more resilient than it used to be um, versus when I didn't take it. So it's 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 definitely top three for me for gut health is that combo right there. And it's inexpensive. I know BPC is a cheaper peptide. Not sure about KPV, but great combination. So hundred percent. But yeah, if you're if you're interested in this kind of stuff, you're, I, want, I need to say this every time. Don't go online and go gray market. You don't know what the hell's in those research chemicals. Go through a doctor that goes through an actual pharmacy. And then we have people at MP I actually read, I wish I would have shared that stat. I read some stat on like actually the amount of like gray market stuff. That's like increasing right now, like uh, fake shit, bad shit. I know. Yeah. I know. It's crazy. All right. So uh, I got a shout out that is really cool. Okay. On Twitter or X. What do they call it now? X? Is it X? It's X. You're going to love this, bro. All right. I don't even know. I hope you're following these people. Okay. Illuminati bot. (laughs) All right. Bro, if you like- Are you shouting out conspiracy theory stuff? Yes. Oh my God. It's so good. Did you see my meme I posted the other day about that? No. With the, like the- the You're getting deep in it too, bro. You sent some weird shit. What did he send the other day? I ask. I I was going to get this shirt. has like tally marks. has like 20 tally marks and like none. You know what? You, so you know why you're new to the conspiracy world. Mm-hmm. So you still buy everything. Uh, he sent us. He I've, sent been, us I've been hanging out with this guy for over 15 years. Yeah, but you haven't accepted. You haven't let anything. You haven't let it ramped up. Uh, the last the few years. years have opened you up. Yeah. No. What did you send us? You sent us this clip that shows that Taylor Swift. Oh yeah. <laughs> looks identical to the same. <laughs> There's a part of me that I like to just kind of like throw that, in, like see what happens when I put it in the group thread with you guys. Because you want it to be. You want it. You want validation. What's the one you just sent the other day? We're like, what the fuck? Oh yeah. So the. This re- pertains to that that painting yes. you have of the girl. That's like they're not even real. Yeah. Yeah. So apparently, like they did some digital scan, like some guy online of the. She just had a, a to see if it was like AI. If, if, yeah, if it was actually her or not, based off of like. The and if it's real, video it's, it scores like a six point five or above or something yeah, like that. Below that, six point six, and it scored like a one point two or something. So, so according like, to the to this anal, uh, analysis, it it's not her. It wasn't her face. Yeah. Yeah. So I saw and that. They traced the IP address to like the White House. Yeah, White to like House. two doors, like yeah. two, like literally the same street. So I saw that, and then I saw the people that were countering hilarious. that argument, and they're just like, you can actually, if you dig on her, you can find out about her. You know what though? You guys ever look at pictures of like Biden went before and now, and look weird. at his face, or who was it? Jamie Foxx who came out and talked, and they showed his face before and after. And you're like, that looks not like. Okay, him. have you ever seen? So you know, Mission Impossible, how they have those like masks and yeah. stuff that they get real sophisticated with. This there's this lady that won like Nobel awards for being able to literally like make masks of people and voice changing devices to in, indistinguishable. Yep, and she worked for the CIA, so that really exists. Yeah. So yeah, there you go. So on. reconcile with that. <laughs> so it's facts. Lizard yeah, people are facts. Real. Anyway, the shout out Illuminati bot. It's good fun. <laughs> Don't believe it. Wink. It's good stuff. It's really hard to find on the go snacks that are high in protein, satiating, and healthy and natural. Well, we work with a company called Paleo Valley that makes grass fed meat sticks. They're delicious. They're not dry. The macros are incredible. It's a great alternative to the crappy stuff you find at the gas station. Go check them out. The meat sticks from Paleo Valley. So it's paleovalley.com forward slash mind pump. Use the code mind pump 15 and get 15% off your order. All right, back to the show. Our first caller is Jason from Nova Scotia. Jason, what's happening? How can we help you? Hey, how you doing? Good. Um, so my name's Jason Murphy. I'm from uh, Nova Scotia, Canada. Um, 
I'm just going to jump right into my question here and, and then give you some background information. Um, so I picked up listening to you guys uh, summer of 2022. Um, I don't think I've missed any episodes. Uh, so I've heard you talk a lot about walking and cardio and the signal that it sends. So my question is with the idea that cardio sends an endurance signal to the body that can conflict with the strength building signal. Um, at what point would the intensity level of walking shift from recovery and healthy movement, you know, to cardio and interfere with the muscle building signal? Uh, so I'm thinking in terms of, you know, intensity, um, volume, you know, how many times a week, frequency, uh, number of steps, those types of things. Uh, and I'll give you some background and the reason why I'm asking the question. Um, so right now I'm, I'm 40 years old. Uh, I've got two boys. Uh, I've got a high intensity job working for a regional center of education. I own two businesses. I'm co-owner of a microbrewery and a property. I'm sole owner of a property development company. Uh, I've got an awesome girlfriend. So life's busy for me. Um, I do like to run. So in the spring, summer, fall, I like to run twice a week, uh, five kilometers. And that takes me between 22 and a half and 25 and a half minutes to do that. So back in 2022, I was weighing 250 pounds. Uh, I was doing a lot. I was trying to get 100,000 steps per week. I was running three times a week. I was strength training six times a week, eating 2,200 calories with the occasional summer barbecue where I got up to, you know, three, 4,000 calories. Uh, wasn't happy with my results. Um, listen to you guys. I decided it was time to try a reverse diet slash bulk. Um, reversed way too hard. Uh, I did listen to your uh, metabolism boosting uh, episode somewhere back in October and bought the the metabolism boosting pack. So I got the guide to reverse dieting, power lift, anabolic. Um, I will say through that reverse, I did get up to 275, um, but I did hit some PRs. I did anabolic. I followed it with symmetry and then I did anabolic again and I was able to squat 405 and deadlift 495. Um, and after that in January, I decided I need to start a cut again. Uh, it went well. Uh, I did anabolic, I did aesthetic, and I did phase one of cardio. Uh, in April, that April, I picked up running again one to two times a week. I aimed for 10 to 12,000 steps a day, and I got myself down to 225 pounds. My squat was still 405, and my deadlift, did, my deadlift dropped to 455. So right now, my goal is to reverse back out of this. Um, I want to keep my weight below 240. Uh, I want to get up to 3,200 calories per day. I plan on doing it slow. I'm hoping to hit 3,200 calories around January. Um, my programming play, plan right now, I'm doing phase two and phase three asymmetry, uh, while I'm still running one to two days a week. So I still have a race in early October, um, that I'm still training for. And then after that, I'm going to head into anabolic advanced, uh, and I'm going to drop the running cause I'm a fair weather runner. I don't like doing it when the weather's shitty. So, uh, I'm going to back off of that. Um, I guess my question is, uh, again, at what point? do what signal should i look for um to know that i'm interfering with that muscle building signal because as i get into anabolic advanced and reverse dieting i want to build muscle and i want to gain strength yeah jason, jason are you like six five yeah, how, how tall, tall are, are you, you? that's what i was just gonna ask that <laughs> i'm only five eleven cheeks whoa, whoa, whoa. Uh, what, you're no, five eleven you bulked up to 275 and then you cut down to 225 yes holy, holy what's, wow, your, shit. What? what's your body fat percentage at do you know I don't know exactly. I, I don't, I've never measured it. I try and compare it to pictures. I think this yeah, summer when I was 225, it would have been right around 20%. Were you jacked or, yeah, you, or were you fat? Were you, would you look like at 275? Well, so I gained, I gained muscle and strength, but I was way too fat. Way too fat. Okay. Okay. So uh, uh, a 50 you pound. You do not look like somebody who even no, can carry that. Yeah, you look way leaner yeah, than that. Yeah, I picture that. A 50 <laughs> pound swing in body weight is a lot. At your high, from 275 to 225 at your height is way too much. Yeah, yeah. I thought so you, you didn't do a reverse taller. diet. You just went, you just, you, you went ham. Yeah, bro. you binge. <laughs> and then the cut sounds a little <laughs> aggressive and you're doing a lot of extra. Well, like, what's your goal? What is your goal here? Is your goal just to move and be busy? Do you have a specific goal? I mean, I've got two young boys that are busy, so I want to be able to keep up with them, and I can now, um, which is good. Uh, I want to be strong, but right now, as I get into next summer, the long-term goal is aesthetically I want to be better than I was this past summer. Um, so I'd like to be 225 or less, uh, and instead of you know 20-ish percent body fat, I'd like to be 15-ish percent body fat. 
Okay. Well, I mean, you could do all that with all the running and stuff too. So here's the deal. I'm going to give you a general answer because context matters here with, with the question that you asked. If you're training cardio to try to improve stamina and endurance and you're pushing it, that's when it starts to interfere with uh, strength training. It typically interferes when you're pushing for competing performance goals. Strength and maximum endurance tend to compete. Now, if you're just walking and you're not training walking, like you're trying to go for crazy distance to improve performance, it's, it's fine. It's probably okay. Now, context matters if your calories are too low, if you're overstressed, if you're not sleeping enough then, you know, that could also be too much. But generally speaking, it's fine. As long as you're not training to maximize endurance while you're training to maximize uh, your strength. It sounds like you're doing too much and it sounds like you're going too far in either direction yeah. with all of this. This um, is actually a lot easier than it needs. It's going to be easier. Than, way easier. Yeah, than it needs. Like you do way, way more than you need to. You know what I love to tell somebody who's not like a hardcore, like, like people that just don't love running, but they want to keep the car. Like just focus on your mile time. Like literally, like you should be able to run a mile under 10 minutes. If you're a relatively fit person, you can improve that relatively quick. And I tell you right now, the very few times in your life, are you ever going to have to chase anybody longer than a mile? And you're going to be just fine. Like this people, we, people go from that to like 30 minute, 40 minute, these huge, like there's, unless you want to be really good at doing 40 minutes of cardiovascular endurance type training, then there's no reason to, to train that. Much. I would literally run a mile. Like I would run, I would run a mile and improve my mile time and keep it. Find a place you love it at where you feel like, man, I feel good when I keep it under X amount of minutes and maintain that. And that only you could literally do that every other day running before you train. Yeah. It's that simple on the cardio side. And then the weight training, you don't even need to be doing as much lifting as you're doing. A full body routine, three four days a week is gonna is going to build an epic physique. And if you can still run a mile under eight minutes and you're training three, four days, full body, you can build an incredible physique. Yeah, at you're eating what now? What, what are you eating at? 2,200 calories a day? Uh, I bumped it up to 20, between 23 and 24 now as I, you know, I'm trying to reverse. Yeah, I would, towards, I, towards 32. I would reverse up to 3000 while trying to build. I mean, for a guy your size, you, you want to be around that. Um, maybe even a little higher. I wouldn't do a quick, uh, I wouldn't reverse super fast. I would give yourself some time and, yeah. and I would just focus on strength and muscle and I wouldn't worry so much about pushing uh, performance and endurance. Walking is totally fine. You want to do it like what Adam said. I mean, that's, you know, you could do that a couple days a week, no problem. Wouldn't be an issue. Uh, and that's pretty much it. It's you're because I've worked with so many people, Jason, I'm getting a very strong sense that you're the kind of person that overdoes it. That's just overdoing everything. Overdoing the diet, overdoing it when he bulks, overdoing <laughs> you it when he cuts. You think? Overdoing it doing the workout. Um, so, you, yeah, yeah. And with your reverse diet, you should not see a 50 pound swing in body weight. If you reverse diet properly, you'll go up from what your body weight is now, you'll go up maybe 10 pounds at most. Yeah. That's about it. And by the way, the reason why none of us answered the uh, where the actual original question, which is like, where's the the cardio threshold? Thing? There's actually a, a ter cardio threshold is what that means is once your heart rate exceeds a certain heart rate, you then dip into cardiovascular endurance versus just just do, moving. Just moving. Mm -hmm. Now, the reason why none of us answer that is because that changes all the time. Yeah. That and and it's so individual. Yeah. Variance, so the the like the, the, the the more cardiovascular endurance adapted you are, the higher that number is going to be. So in other words, somebody who always runs all the time, they could get away with doing that and and never even tip dip. Like they could get away with like a, a, a pretty good light jog and never even jump, jump into cardio threshold versus somebody who doesn't ever do that. And then they could barely do a power walk and they could dip into their cardio threshold. Yeah. So it really has a lot to do with your cardiovascular endurance on when does it tip over from being just activity and walking type of movement versus cardiovascular endurance training has everything to do with where your level is. But again, back to my original point, if you just want to like, because I, I have very similar goals. I'm I'm four, over 40 years old. I have a kid. I want to be able to play sports with him and kind of run. I, I want to be as, I want to be faster than he is until I no longer am. And so if I can keep my mile time down, there ain't much he can do that's going to burn me out to where I can't sustain that. And that is enough that I'm not ever sacrificing my gains or building muscle and building the physique, which is what I'm more passionate about. I'm more passionate about being strong, looking strong, feeling good, looking good. And as long as I can run around and play with him and kick his ass at most things, I'm pretty happy. And so 
keep it a good mile time while also building an awesome physique is, in my opinion, one of the best ways to do that. There you go. Yeah, I, I feel the same way. Um, I'll tell you, I'm there. I'm a, a you know hyper competitive person. I do three races a year with my girlfriend and my friends, and I right now I'm the fastest of the group, and I, I don't want to lose that. Um, but but I, it's, I'm conflicted because strength training, being strong, and building a great physique is is more important to me. But I hate losing, so I yeah, I have a hard time giving up the running for sure. Yeah, yeah. well, yeah. you're gonna have to make a yeah. choice. Yeah, yeah. yeah. something's got to <laughs> give. Something's got to give, and it seems like you're kind of you go all in on whatever it is you decide you want to do for the time, and you don't need to do that. You can literally have a nice. Nice balance of staying. And here, there's nothing wrong with like keeping your mile time down. And then let's say, you know, you get a wild hair and you're like, you know what? I want to train for a race for the next two or three months. And then you can shift your focus of strength training and being the super strong guy to now being more cardiovascular guy. That's what's beautiful about cardio endurance. Yeah. You can shift that in a week it's to a two very weeks. quick adaptation. Super fast. Yeah. The strength training and building the physique and building the metabolism and sculpting a body that takes consistency yeah. and diet and it's slow. And it's like, so I would put almost all my focus on that while also like, okay, as long as I can keep my mile time so I, I can still do it under eight minutes, I'm, I'm fit enough that I know that if I needed to turn it on for a race in a month, I could turn it on and be ready for that race. That's, that's how I would, if I'm you, that's how I would approach my training is I would always keep a, a decent mile time, but everything is focused around building the metabolism, building the physique, looking a certain way. And then when I get those, you know, once a year, twice a year where I want to go compete in a race, I know within a couple weeks I can be ready for that race if, since I've been maintaining a good mile time easily. Okay. Excellent. Thank you. You got it, Jason. Thanks for calling in. All right. Bye-bye. Yeah, ultimately, it's really just are you train are you trying to build endurance while you're trying to build strength? By the way, according based on what you said, it's like building muscle and strength slow to come, but also slow to go. Mm -hmm. uh, stamina and endurance slow to quick to come, but also quick to go. Easy, it's, yeah, very easy fast. both yeah. ways. That's why yeah. like it doesn't. And I tell you what, if you keep a good mile time, where he could he could yeah you're fine yeah. yeah he could keep his if he keeps his mile under eight minutes or even less yeah and and that that's seven or eight minutes of running. That's not a lot of running now, you know, seven, to eight yeah. minutes of running keep you, that volume down low. Yeah. You yeah. keep that right there. And then, and, but, and then the rest is all focused on building a physique and training. Like, I mean, I'm always keeping this in mind too. And even just doing like hit sessions and doing things where I'm like a little bit of circuit train, a little bit of something to address just stamina in general. I think it's a good thing to consider, but yeah, I mean, it's, you don't really need much more than that to, to be able to just get up and go. Yep. Our next caller is Ona from Spain. Hi, Ona. How can we help you? Hi, guys. Nice to meet you. Hello. Hi. I'm so glad to be here talking to you. I've been listening to you from six years ago now. Oh, wow. Yeah. And you have been a really good guide and a big support in my journey. Great. So I'm going to read my question. Uh, well, I'm 38 years old. And I suffer amenorrhea since my early 20s with no diagnosis. It's not advanced menopause or PCOs. I've always rejected taking, taking birth control pills because I'm against it and I'm conscious of its side effects. In fact, the last time I tried, I suffered from parasites, SIBO and intestinal candida. Around my 30s, I was diagnosic with osteopenia, and now it's already osteoporosis, and doctors prescribe me HRT, which I want to avoid. A little bit of my background, I was a cardio addict for a long time, competing in ultra trail running races until I broke my hip and I've got a prosthesis. At this point, I found you guys, but I still push myself along with other forms of cardio, such as swimming or riding a road bike for a long distance. Until I finally switched my mind and I've been lifting consistently for three years. But there have been seasons with more cardio with weights, as you call, rather than proper weight training. I just finished MAPS, MAPS Anabolic and I started to enjoy this kind of training. My current weight is uh, 42 kilograms and 8% body fat uh, measured by my nutritionist with calibers. Last year, I reached 38 and 4.5 body fat. Concerning nutrition, I'm kind of restrictive either. I will say I suffer from orthorexia. Eating only cold foods, I never eat out, no processed foods, and of course, prioritizing protein between 100 20, 140 grams per day. 
my sleep is off from years now as a listener of as a listener of uh, Huberman podcast I'm following all the right protocols but seems not to having any effect my question is related to peptides would you recommend them to avoid HRT uh, through one of your episodes I contacted with Jay Campbell he told me he has a private forum but is not uh, personal guidance as a doctor provides could you address me to some experts who can help me considering I'm from Barcelona, Spain? Yeah. Ona. Okay. So have you been told you exercise too much? You don't eat enough. And that's probably yeah. why you suffer from, okay. So why are you asking us about peptides? Because I thought uh, when you had this episode with Jay Campbell, I thought it was a good solution or alternative. Yeah, alternative to what? to estrogens or to taking HRT or... Um, or not, not exercising as much and eating more? Um, okay. No. So I'm going to give you... Listen, I'm going to give you the answer, okay? If you want the answer, yeah. I have it, but I think you know what the answer is. I think you already know, and I think what you're doing is you're trying to ask if there's ways you could go around doing what you need to do by mm -hmm. taking something else. I'm going to tell you right now, peptide's not going to help you. Peptide, okay. there are peptides that just... And, and hormones treatment mm -hmm. that can help with bone density, but it's minuscule. I mean, you're young and you're already in osteoporosis. Okay. Hormone yeah, therapy, no. peptides, uh, osteoporosis drugs that depress the immune system. They will increase your bone density in a very small percentage or at best, if you're lucky, they'll prevent the, the continual bone loss at best. And they have their own mm -hmm. side effects. And none um, of them would compare to a calorie surplus and falling maps anabolic uh, to a T yeah. with rest period. I'm going to tell you the is. I'm going to tell you the answer right now. This will yeah. do it. This will mm -hmm. do it for you. Whether you do it or not is up to you. But this will 100 percent fix the problem. Number one, you've already probably done this, but I would check for any nutrient deficiencies because if you have a deficiency in let's say magnesium or vitamin D, then it'll make it very difficult. So, and I'm sure you've already been tested, but if you haven't, it's a very simple test yeah. with your doctor. So I would get my nutrient levels tested. Number two, I would go in a calorie surplus. I would eat more calories, a lot more calories, a lot more. I would bump your calories slowly over time and probably get mm -hmm. yourself a good 1,000 to 1,500 calories more than what you're eating now. Number three, I would only do strength training two to three days a week, and I would do no other exercise, no more cardio for you. The cardio plus the calorie okay. restriction is what got you in this place. Mm -hmm. And what's happening is your body yeah. is your body's eating away at itself. If you don't reverse those things, uh, no peptide and no hormone on earth is going to stop what's happening right now. And so, by the way, the advice he just gave will will crush any HRT or oh my peptide. God. You'll you see know, a it's reversal. Better than, it's better than all. You'll that. see a reversal in what's happening in within a within a very within a four to eight to twelve week period very quickly okay That's so it. so guys do you think that if i start to eat a lot more and just exercise three days per week even if i avoid estrogens or peptides or whatever my bone density will increase yes yes Yep. Yes. Yep. As long as you don't have a nutrient deficiency, I want to make sure that that's clear. Right. Absolutely. Nothing tells your body to build bone like strength training. Yep. And then you need to feed your body appropriately. Eating too little calories, losing your period, which you also talked about here. No, yeah, yeah. 20 okay. years ago. So Yeah. So your, your body doesn't feel healthy enough to even be fertile. So mm -hmm. it's not letting you have a period. And now you've gotten to the point where your body's eating away at itself. And the bone loss is a significant signal. And if you don't reverse that, it's going to be very bad. So yes, bump the calories, exercise less, no cardio at all. You can walk, but I would do no more running, no more cardio. I would no, lift, I'm not lift running weights. at all. I'm just no, uh, no. just anabolic. and swimming, just walking. swimming sometimes. Swimming's fine. Yeah, that's fine. And I would lift weights. Mm -hmm. I would lift weights two to three days a week. So MAPS mm -hmm. Anabolic would be the perfect program for you. And Yeah, I'm already following. And that'll do okay. it. That will 100% mm -hmm. do it. All the peptides, hormones, all that stuff, you, you, you might not even notice anything from taking those if you don't stop, if you don't do the things that I said. When you swim, how mm -hmm. long are you swimming for? Right now, during the summer, because here in summer is uh, easier to swim, about 2,000 meters. I don't know in yards how many. 50, 50. 2,000 meters. 
Yeah, so good. how how long time wise? Half hour, hour, two hour? Like how long? No, it's uh, forty five minutes, fifty okay. minutes, okay. more or less. Okay. Yeah, you're yeah. fine. You're yeah. fine with that. Ona, Ona mm -hmm. have you talked? Have you met with the therapist about your relationship with diet and exercise? Because you overtrain, you undereat. Have you have you talked with anybody? Well, uh, yes, uh, yes, I have been in therapy, but not with one person with a group. And my nutritionist is uh, is alert of that, so okay. he. I to help, but it's difficult for him to push me to the cal how many calories I need to to eat because he's always telling me, but I'm not following to the T. Yeah, <laughs> I, on, on I, a, the, so. the, listen. The answer is going to be simple, but following it is going to be hard, right? Because you have a yeah, yeah, I know, yeah, yeah. yeah. But and, but what I told you, we'll do it. It'll hundred percent do it. And and then so even if I was going to explore HRT and peptides with you, which I do see as a potential option in the future, this would be what I want to do with yeah. you first, no matter what. So I would want yeah. to I would want to give you the big rock first, the the thing that's going to make the biggest difference. Because then mm -hmm. only and only then do those things really work. Because if you put H someone on HRT or give them peptides and they're still yeah. malnutrition and overtraining, you're going to see little to nothing from the, all that expensive mm -hmm. therapy. So if you really want to potentially benefit from the, the, those peptides or from each, either one of those, we've got to first get this right here. We've we got to get we got to mm -hmm. get the calories. We got to get the calories up and just focus on trying to get stronger with lifting weights. And you're doing and that how many calories? How many calories do you think? Where are you? Where, I, are, you, I should where are you at right now? More or less. Where are you at right now, daily? About one thousand five hundred. Yeah, no, I, I would, I would or, get two thousand. Yeah, I would get you up to two thousand right away, and then, mm -hmm. and then slowly bring them higher, little by little, while while following the exercise advice that we gave, like a reverse diet or something Correct. like yep. that. Yes. Correct. Yes. I'd get you right to, have right to 2000 right away. And then after mm -hmm. that, I would be, we would be talking on a regular basis. In fact, we're going to, I want to put you in our private forum. Are you in our private forum already or no? No, because I don't have a social media oh. platforms. Oh, well, good for yeah. you. I don't use them. Just Instagram to follow you guys or Huberman. Yeah. But I don't, but well, if, if uh, it's because of the forum, I will just okay. sign up. And okay. Well then no I, yeah, I mm -hmm. want to give you free access. Okay. Cause I'd like to, I'd like to stay in touch with you as you go through this process, because I do know how difficult as, as simple as the advice yeah. we're giving and saying, I know how difficult it can be to follow. And so if we yeah. can be there for moral support, we have a great community community in there, by the way, we've got a hand, at least a handful of people that have actually gone through the exact same thing before. So there's a great mm -hmm. community in there of support, including yeah. us. Yep. And that I'd get you up to 2000 right away. And then I'd want to hear about how is MAPS and a ball going? Where's your deadlift at? Yes. Where's your squat yes. at? Yes. How, how strong are you? Have we added weight to the bar? And I would be encouraging you to get lifting mm -hmm. heavier take, and heavier. Take your mentality. <clears throat> and because it's going to be hard to take your mentality and just turn it off. Uh, take your mentality and point it towards getting stronger. Go ahead and become obsessed with getting stronger for now. At some point, we're going to have to fix that as well, okay? But for now, if you could take your focus and your obsession, the obsessed uh, kind of mentality you have with exercise and diet and put it towards yeah. strength, I want to get stronger. I want to see how strong I can get. That's going to take you out of this uh, initially. And I've worked with people worse off than you, and we've, rever and we've reversed bone loss through this protocol. And they, they were worse than me? Yes, I worked with a woman okay, who was so. so bad with her osteoporosis. Mm -hmm. It was basically an emergency situation. And yeah. we okay. saw reversals to the point where the doctors got on the phone with me because they couldn't, it was just shocking that she improved the way she did. So I've seen this before. You could totally do this. The reason why you are where you are right now is because of what you're doing. So we know what the problem is. That's why I know this, yeah. is, this is, that's why I know you're probably going to get great response if you get out of it. Yeah, but now for my mind is like to jump into the black hole, you know? Yep. It's like, okay, there is no um, age or I don't know. I Sorry, because I, I I don't know how to explain in English right now, but well, I, I, it's really difficult for me. It's like a jump into the swimming pool, but you don't know if there is water or not, you, you know? Have, yeah. Something like that. So, so you have us. You have us. On a communicate with us through the yeah. forum. Look, yep. here's what's happened. You've developed this friendship with exercise and diet. And it's probably been there for you when other people haven't. It's been there for you for a long time, whether you're stressed mm -hmm. or scared or depressed, you could always reach for that friend. But like a drug, 
this friend is hurting you now. So we have to just yeah. change the relationship. We just have to change mm -hmm. the relationship. And one of the easiest ways to do it is to focus on getting strong. Just remind, just, just like the mentality you have with your, I got to do this. I got to do that. Focus on getting strong. If you get stronger, your bones are building. So if you can lift more weight in the gym, that means your bones are going in the right direction. Oh, now how long, how long have you been doing maps anabolic for now? Just one round now. I finished just the first round. You went all the way. It, you did. Yeah. Okay. yeah, yeah. I already finished. Prom yeah. Promise me as you go through it again to rest as mm -hmm. long or longer than we say in there. Mm -hmm. In between sets. Yeah, no, I, I'm, do I'm doing it because. Okay. okay. <laughs> three okay, minutes. Yeah, because three <laughs> minutes longer. Go read a no, book no, in between no. sets. Oh, I don't care. No, I, between, <laughs> no, between sets, I'm listening to you guys. Oh, I, okay, I, I okay. always listen to your podcast while I'm okay, playing. Okay, Ona, okay. Do, you take, so, do you take creatine? And, do you take creatine? Yeah, no, no. I have creatine at home, but I don't know how to take it. And today I have uh, asked my nutritionist, but he didn't answer me. How many grams and when? and Five grams. You know, Five grams five a day grams. after your workout or on the days you don't work out, just take it in the morning. Five grams a day. That'll also help with five your bone. Five grams. That'll help with bone after, density too. After the workout. Okay. After the workout and yeah. on the days you don't work out, just take it in the morning. But, that'll but, that'll but help. By too. the way, if you forget to take it right after, it doesn't matter. Just take it every day. Yeah, you can take even, it every day. No, no. Don't worry. I'm really a stick on yeah, yeah, the supplements. Not forget. like you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, she won't <laughs> no, for me, it's not a problem. Okay. I'm really conscious and, you know, constant okay. with the, the five things. Five grams post workout. Yeah, it's actually, it's already been shown to, to help with bone density. So no, no. Okay. That's why I, I already wrote it. Okay, yeah. good. And I have to say that I'm happy about your answer because uh, I prefer to stick on the nutrition and uh, training than estrogens or peptides, you know, because yeah. uh, it's side effect. Uh, I don't, I don't. Us good. too. Like well, it. Us too. We no. would always go that direction first. No. Yeah. <clears throat> yes. Yeah. All right, Ona. So, We're going to get you in the forum, okay? We're yeah, please. Okay. Yes. All right. Okay. All right. Thank you for Thank calling. Thank you very in. much. All right. We'll be in touch. It. Thank you. Bye bye. Bye bye. Oh, I feel for her. Yeah. That is tough. Yeah, yeah. She, I mean, the answer is very clear. Yeah, yeah. But the problem is, it's going to be a really hard relationship for her to break. I mean, that that's one of those callers where it, I mean, you'd like to have two hours with her, right? I because know. obviously, there's something that led us down this path to to I mean, to push that far to where I've trained one other person like her, where I trained a young lady who was getting into osteoporosis because she overtrained herself for so long and underate for so long, she reversed it so quickly because she applied all that stuff because her body is literally there because it has no choice. Yeah. She's beat the shit out of herself for years and years and years. And is hey, kudos to her for this. She's been listening to us for six years. She's just now done maps anabolic. Yeah, mm -hmm. well, bro, six how years hard is it hearing, to... hearing that, hearing us talk about that stuff. The long had, play. Yeah, <laughs> right. I know. Right. Our next caller is Rachel from Pennsylvania. Hi, Rachel. How can we help you? Hi, guys. Thanks for having me on. You got it. Um, so you guys have my background in question, but some time's passed since I initially wrote in. So I'll just update as I go through. Okay. Um, I ran aesthetic in the spring and I was trying to lean out, but I was having a really hard time staying disciplined eating. Um, I eat pound for pound in protein and I was trying to aim be between 1700 and 2000 calories when I was trying to cut but I was probably averaging closer to like 2,200, 2,400 and essentially doing well most of the day, but then just losing control in the evenings. Um, and so I figured it was probably a combination of doing a little bit higher volume than I was used to. And then just having a tendency to deprive myself a little bit. And then when I reintroduced things, it was kind of like a snowball and then a binge, that kind of thing. Um, and so I wasn't really able to consistently get that under control all summer, but I decided to start MAPS Anabolic at the end of July. And since then, I've had a bit better control. Um, I'm doing, I'm toward the end of phase two right now. And then once a week, I do a hot yoga class. And then I also average about 20 to 25,000 steps every day. Um, but essentially, I have this issue where I'm flipping back and forth. I feel like every couple of weeks between being able to be really disciplined and staying around 1700 calories, but then um, going back to feeling like I can't stop eating or I want to eat past full. Um, so I'm trying to figure out what the root of it might be. And I'm thinking some of it might be a little bit behavioral, um, but I'm also wondering if my maintenance calories are higher than I think they are. And so when I'm cutting, I'm too low. 
So I guess I just wanted to see what you guys thought. About I think that. that's a good guess because that would be my. I, so what are you doing to get twenty to twenty five thousand steps a day? What do you do for work? Um, I actually work from home. So I. <laughs> Well, instead of commuting now, I used to commute like 50, 45, 50 minutes in and out pits in and out of Pittsburgh. So I get up, I'll go to on the days that I don't go to the gym, I just get up and I go for like an hour walk in the mornings. And then when I take my lunch, I go for another hour walk. And then in the evening after dinner, I go for another hour walk. Okay. Um, and that didn't always, it wasn't always that way. I kind of started with like 15,000 or 10,000 and then it kind of grew each year. And so I've been doing that for like probably the last five, five years. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I, yeah my guess is you're, you, I think you're burning more calories than you think you are. I think you yeah. might need it. You, yeah, you said yeah. there's some behavioral stuff. Have you ever dealt with like, like huge weight fluctuations? Does your, do you have issues with food where if you're really stressed or anxious? I mean, everybody does that, but do you find yourself? I think I, I think there's a stress from work um, and just like life stress in general. As far as like huge weight fluctuations, not a ton. I mean, I had I played soccer my entire life through college, and I had I had three ACL surgeries, so I'd have these periods of not being able to do pretty much anything for like seven months, mm -hmm. and then going back to being really active again, and then so that happened three times. But since then, I don't really run much anymore at all. I just stick to doing weightlifting. You have a uh, you have a lot of muscle. Yeah, that, I pulled up your pictures. I think you just need to eat more. more. Yeah, more calories. You I might mean, need more fat in your diet. Sometimes the fat's a little low, but you might need more calories. Yeah. It sounds like you have a fast metabolism. You have really good muscle. I would try a reverse diet to see what happens. I mean, the picture you sent, you've got a visible six pack. Uh, are, how close are you to that, to that body fat percentage, the picture that you sent us? I'm probably getting, so, so whenever I, that photo was taken, that was right before I actually did a bod pod test and I came up as 17.5 around then. Yeah. Now I use an EKG scale, um, and I keep all my factors consistent when I do it. And right now I'm like a couple pounds higher and 1% higher than uh, that, yeah. than I was when you're I fine. weighed yeah, during you're, that time. You're just, you, you gotta, you, you're nice. You need your body yeah, you gotta wants more. more. You're an ex athlete. Yeah, I can tell you got a lot of muscle in your legs too. And you're walking 20. And the other thing too, is you haven't been walking 20, 25,000 steps your whole life. Like you just are like doing that. So that's burning a lot yeah. more. If somebody was like, uh, like if I talked to like a mail carrier or like, I remember I trained one time a, a soccer ref, he'd been one for like two decades. Yeah, they're doing was, that every day. They've been years. doing that every day for decades. Like their body has become adapted to that. And so it's not like a huge calorie burn for them. But if you are actively seeking out that many steps and you, you haven't been doing that your whole life, you've only been doing that say for the last year or less, that's a lot of calorie demand, yeah. even for walking. That's a lot of calorie demand that you're, and on a body that is built like yours with that much muscle, you probably need closer to 3000 calories. Yeah. Rachel, are you eating whole natural foods or are you eating processed foods? Yeah, absolutely. Whole natural foods. I'm you're, really into nutrition fine. and cooking and all that. I think um, there are a couple other things that I should mention sure. that I don't know if this will change anything. Um, so I went off birth control after being on it for like nine years and I haven't had a period since February now. Yeah. Um, and then I also used to do more intermittent fasting, but I haven't technically been doing it because I have creamer in my coffee. It's just, I haven't been having that first like big meal of the day until around noon. Um, and after listening to more research around intermittent fasting, I'm starting to hear more about how it could inadvertently affect your period as a female. So Rachel, so, yeah. all right, this is actually um, kind of simple. I, and I know what's happening here is for a female, you probably eat more than a lot of your friends and maybe even more than your, and, and maybe even more than your boyfriends. And you're like, am I eating too much? Like what's going on? First off, you're, you're, it can take a while to get your period back, but you're so lean. Yeah. That's part of the problem. Yep. You got to go on a bulk if you want your yeah. period to come back. Yeah. You've been an athlete for so long and you're shred. I can see in your shoulders, you're really lean. Yeah. So I, I think you get, I think you should go on a reverse diet and don't judge where it goes. I bet you're going to get close to 3000 calories and be totally fine. I mean, and an easy way to do this, if you, if, I don't know how long have you still, are you still just doing the coffee and cream thing in the morning or yeah, you, throw browsers, throw just a meal, say. have a nice big breakfast, have a good fat protein yeah. breakfast. I've been trying to like add that big meal earlier intentionally. Yeah. Um, yeah. I bet that'll, ha that'll probably handle your cravings later on the day. Yeah. If you have, if you have a like nice five, 600 calorie breakfast, Maybe some scrambled eggs with cheese, some vegetables, uh, maybe some throw some steak in there, ground beef, 
and uh, that'll probably handle the cravings later. But you got to eat more. Your calories are too low for your body. You have higher nutrient demands. You, you're that's that's one hundred percent where I'll go uh, with with your question. You look amazing though. You could totally compete. Yeah, yeah, you got the physique. Yeah, I always get asked. I'm just like, uh, I don't know. I really like, I mean, I'm just such a foodie. I love to eat, love to cook. <laughs> so I'm just like, I don't know if I want to well, sack. Eat some for- more, girl, because you got, you, you're, yeah. Pl- yeah, you're plenty lean enough right now and you're moving a ton and you have a lot of muscle. You- that And your intuition is right. What you feel is that your body just wants more. That's it. There's no, re- like, you're t- what you're probably thinking is your maintenance is probably a cut for you and you could get away with easily eating 20, 2,800 to 3,000 calories. You know how strong you're going to get if you start eating a little more yeah. in the gym? You're going to you're gonna be, it's going to be pretty Oh crazy. yeah, what program of ours are, what are you running right now? What are you currently running? I'm in like the last week of phase two of anabolic right now. Okay. Yeah. And then you've, what, what did you, I see you ran aesthetic, you said, is mm-hmm. that, are those the two main programs you ran of ours? Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, I give like her, anab- give her give her second yeah, anabolic. Give her yeah, anabolic uh, advanced. Advance. Yeah, give her anabolic advanced. Yeah, like we'll now, what's the what's the difference? Is that like a four? Is that four or five days a week? No, uh, it, it's four days, but it's a totally different program. Yeah, and, and there's like failure training in there. There's some cool yeah. stuff that someone who's advanced like you, and if you earn a calorie surplus, oh, I yeah. would love to see how you benefit from it. Yeah, you're gonna love it. Throw some extra calories on, run that program next, and then get back to us. Yeah. I have one other little question that sort of piggybacks off that. If, sure. if you guys will hear it. Sure. Um, I also had my resting metabolic rate measured at in a lab and it came back that I burned just 1400 calories at rest. And it was like 18 grams of expenditure from carbs <laughs> and then 137 grams from fat. Does that have like any bearing on how I should split my macros? No, like I don't no. really pay. Okay. So you're I was going to, it, yeah, it seems over- like I'm more efficient with my fats from that, but you're overthinking it. Yeah. I mean, you probably are, but so what? I mean, yeah. you're overthinking it. I wouldn't have you go that deep unless you're looking to go like super high level competition and you want to get real okay. ridiculous about it. But now you're overthinking it. Literally, Everything screams to me, you just need to eat more. I mean, but let's use that number for a second just to put some perspective of what's going on here, right? So that's like you could lay in bed and not move all day and your metabolism will burn 1,400 calories. We both know you're not just laying in bed all day. You're fucking walking for three hours and getting 25,000 steps. So you can just go ahead and add another 1,000 calories just from that alone. Minimum, three hours of walking a day and then throw in a, a MAPS anabolic workout three times a week plus trigger sessions in there too. I mean, you're, you are burning a lot of calories. Yeah. You're- I guess I just wasn't sure since I've been doing the steps for like five years now, I wasn't sure how efficient I was at it. And if it was really, you're, how over, much it's, you're overthinking it. You know how we know you're efficient because you're shredded yeah, and yeah. you're, and you're eating 23, 2400 calories yeah, yeah. and you feel like you're not eating enough. You got to listen to your body. One of the mm-hmm. challenges that that people make when they're fitness fanatics <coughs> is they get so into the weeds with the numbers that they don't even listen to their body anymore. They question their body. You don't. I don't mm-hmm. need to he- do a test on you to know that based off what you said, you probably should eat more. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you're in an awesome spot though. Let's totally. Just, just I mean, you just you just annoyed <laughs> like ninety yeah, percent yeah, of our yeah, female. Yeah, everybody <laughs> hates you right now. <laughs> you have yeah, abs. I'm like, you have I don't abs even want to get. Yeah. I don't want to get bigger. Really, I just kind of want to. I guess tweak some areas like my legs and my butt probably, but yeah. well, you know, you got, sounds like you got them damn good genetics. So yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, I can't help I'm, you with that. I've got the Italian thing going on. Yeah. So. Oh, yeah. there you go. Awesome. Well, I didn't get it. <laughs> what the hell? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what the hell, Rachel? Uh, <laughs> anyway, that's it. I, I would reverse. I, I'd go up in calories, yeah. lift. If you find you're building too much muscle, then I would reduce the intensity of your strength training or place more of it or throw on s- the areas of that you want to work on and then avoid strength training or do less of it for the areas you don't. And that's or this it. is someone who I'd let do cardio. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Go yeah. do so, go ahead and be catabolic and lose some muscle if you're getting too muscular. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. you're you're in a good spot. Yeah. Thanks, guys. All right. You got it. Thanks, Rachel. Have a good one. Yeah. Every once in a while I talk to somebody who's like, oh well. <laughs> <laughs> Everything's working great. Everything, yeah, yeah, <laughs> Don't fine. question it. Well, I'm glad Doug pulled her pictures up too. I mean, I could tell she was fit. I could tell she, by her. I shoulders. didn't know she was that fit. Yeah, I mean, she's, she's like, like abs mm. popping. Fit. No, her metabolism is on fire. Yeah, and, and what she's feeling is literally uh, her body's like, I need nutrients right now. I mean, that was her in, her initial intuition. 
Yep. She literally felt that. And it's like, oh yeah, you're so that's, and, and you may not think that to the point you brought up, it's like, you're eating more than all your friends, maybe even your boyfriend eating that kind of calories. But I mean, of course, yeah, that's but, the thing about it. You're a female. None of them, ain't none of them that jacked. Think about it. You're a female. Right you're sitting next to your friends and maybe even your boyfriend. Like I'm eating more than everybody. I'm yeah, eating make too you much. a little insecure, but yeah, you're killing it. Look at all the activity she does yeah. every day. Yeah, that's a lot. Crazy. I you know, I wanted to point that out too. Like that's a lot. Twenty five thousand steps, you guys. That's a lot is of steps, insane. I've had a handful. I do of that people. per week. Yeah, I've had a few. That's true. That's I actually know, r I real. I mean, that's what most people do in a week. That's actually more than what most people do in an entire week. She's doing every single day, and just because it's walking, it doesn't mean you're not burning. You're definitely yeah. burning calories doing mm -hmm. that. And three hours of that daily on top of a workout. Yeah. And then yeah, a fast metabolism. Feed the body. That's it. Our next caller is Ryan from Florida. Hi, Ryan. What's happening? How can we help you? Hey, guys. Hey, so uh, I just wanted to start things off by kind of saying thanks to everyone at Mind Pump and especially the, the four of you guys that kind of started it off for uh, being some great uh, role models in my life at a time that I really needed it and didn't have much guidance. Uh, I started my fitness journey when I was 16, and that's when I started listening to you guys. So for the past five years, uh, you guys have had a major influence on my life and got me to where I'm at today. Cool. Thank That's you, awesome, bro. Thank you. Yep. Yep. So for the question, so I'm the personal training director at an eSport of Fitness, which is basically like an LA fitness. Uh, it's a $5 million facility with a thousand daily check-ins on average in Tampa Bay, Florida. Uh, I've been working for the company about a year now, a little over a year. And went into it with zero sales experience and about a year of personal training experience. I now have sold about $500,000 in personal training invoice and have been the top producer in my district uh, almost every month since I've started. I've listened to every episode you guys have and would say I'm in a synth where you guys were uh, around my age. Uh, what advice would you guys give me to help me grow as a person, meaning like work-life balance, finding purpose, developing my relationships, as well as financially? And I got to just throw it in there because uh, I've always wanted to kind of hear what you guys would have to say uh, aesthetically in terms of lifting. Um, my stats are I'm 6'1", 21 years old, about 205 pounds and about 15% body fat. Ryan, you're uh, killing it. Yeah. Bro. So real quick. So what, what do you, what do you, what are you on the path? How much do you sell per month in personal training? Yourself? Yeah. Are you talking about yourself or your team, you and your team? Uh, so the way it works is I'm mostly the only one selling the personal training and on average, I mean, I've had a month where I've sold like 60,000 in invoice yeah. and then on average I'll sell about like 30 to yeah, you're, 45. Yeah, you're, to killing it. Yeah, dude. Yeah, you're, killing yeah, you're doing a great job, job, man. All right. So I'll, I'll start with your 20. Uh, I'm 21. Yeah. You got you married with kids? No. Okay. No. So why you asking? Wait, you wait, stop, don't, wait. Yeah. <laughs> stop asking me for, about work life balance. Why don't you have kids yet? <laughs> okay. Listen. Here's the here's the at your age without the responsibilities of you know family, kids, that kind of stuff. Work life balance doesn't exist. Now you want to have some balance so you don't kill yourself. So you still got to get sleep and that kind of stuff. But if you really want to like grow financially and crush it in the space. This is the time you test your limits. This is the time you work as hard as you can mm -hmm. and you can see what you do. Trust me, you'll have time for work-life balance later on in your life, but now is not the time. When you're 21, you what you want to do is see how far you can push yourself. Yeah. That's the goal. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh and that's work that's on the empire. That's that's number 1. Number 2, uh I would look for mentorship with people who are doing better than you that you could watch, observe and be around. This may be your manager and maybe your VP or your president and maybe someone else. But this is where you're going to learn and absorb as much as possible because with your energy and your success already at your age, you can only go up by learning mm -hmm. from people who've already been there uh, before you. And that's where I got the most growth in my entire life was was through mentorship. Now, do you have aspirations to grow further within the company? Are you planning on doing things off on your own and, and have any ideas of what that might look like? Yeah, so I, I do want to get into a GM role where I'd be kind of like the main guy of my club. Uh, I'm not exactly sure if I'd want to go down like the VP r route just because I know like how much, like that would take a lot of years. Um, but I do want to eventually kind of go in. I love personal training. That's what kind of got me into it. I like that one-on-one -on -one, uh, with people. So maybe branching out into to doing that either on my own or with within the company um ryan are you I, I, I don't really know 
I, I got lots for you, bro. It's like the, okay. this, getting a chance to talk to you is like getting a chance to go back and talk to one of our younger selves, right? Like right. you're, we all started in the, in the space, 19, 20, 21 years old. We were all really young. We all were really successful at it. And there's lots of things. If I could go back and tell younger self that, that I would tell myself first off, are you a big reader at all? Uh, I'm not a big reader. I, uh, I'm trying to read. I just started this week adding 20 minutes a night of reading uh, a book, but be, be, uh, not become yet. one, become one. Well, uh, it took, I didn't, okay. I didn't start till I was 25, 26. If looking back, if I would have started when I was 20, 21, I'd be that much further ahead. If I would have become, I mean, set like the way you set fitness goals, set reading goals. So start chipping okay. away at books the same way you chipped away at getting stronger at your squat and deadlift and bench and stuff like that and your sales, okay? That's first and foremost because that'll serve you. The stuff I would be reading if I was you, if I was you, uh, if you haven't picked up Millionaire Next Door, that's a must read at your age right now where you're starting to do well and make some good money so you don't blow it all like I did. Make sure you do that. Mm -hmm. The other one is all things leadership. So I would 100% be diving into like that. That's going to serve and that serves you regardless. If you stay within the company, you shift the GM, you move on and build your own thing, get deep in the weeds with, with leadership, stuff like that. And then take advantage of the fact that you're working for a multi-million dollar company and that they were at one day made zero dollars and now they make millions and millions and be very curious to how they scale to that. Because one, it's going to serve you in your current position, obviously, to know more detail about the company, but really learn all the ins and out of what it took that company. And when you work for it like that, there's you have access to that, which is kind of in line mm -hmm. with what Sal was saying, which is like, you know, reach out to the you know, VPs and DMs and like, sure, if that that's the what. But the point is that you figure that out, like learn about the P&L. Reverse engineer the whole thing. Yes, figure out why why they spend so much on advertising, what things they've done in the past that failed them, what was the biggest growth years, why were they, how do they manage X amount of employees, where, where's the biggest profit margins, like understand all the ins and outs of, of the business. You're in, the, you're in a great seat that if you're asking upper management those type of questions, they're going to love you for that. And that's going to serve you so much if you decide to go out and build something yourself. So reading like crazy, I would definitely pick up, like I said, the financial books, uh, the millionaire next door, like I told you, leadership type stuff. Hang on and, and learn everything you possibly can about how that company got built to where it's at. And you stay right there and keep doing what you're doing. Because yeah. as far as where your body fat percentage is and your size and the success you're having already, you're killing it right now. Uh, and piggybacking off what Sal said, this is the time when you aren't thinking about work-life balance so much. It's like, I don't have any, you get to be selfish. I get to invest every ounce I have into myself. I don't have to think about a wife. I don't have to think about a kid. All I have to do is build me right now. And so every waking moment you have, you're investing in yourself. And if you're not, then you're wasting time. Yeah. Ryan, are you, how badly do you, do you want to succeed at this? Uh, like, like becoming, let's say a general manager, by the way, this is sport of fitness is where you're at. It says sister company to LA fitness. So there's multiple locations, right? Yeah. Yeah. There's probably about 150 okay. sport of fitnesses. All right. How bad do you want to be a GM? I'm going to tell you what, what to do, but you got to follow through and it's almost guaranteed way to do it. Yeah, I mean, that's pretty much what's right in front okay. of me right now. I want you to contact the person who would be the decision maker with that. And that what you're going to say to them is you're going to say, hey, look, I want to become a general manager as fast as possible. Tell me what I need to do and what I need to deliver in order to do that. And they're going to tell you what you got to do in order to become a general manager. And then all you got to do is hit it. That's the exact conversation I had uh, with, uh, my leadership at the time. And they had no choice, but to promote me because they gave me some lofty stuff. And I think they thought I wouldn't do it, but I, I went out and I did it. And then it was like, where's my, where's my spot? Where's my position? And managers love that. If you work for me and you said that to me, I'd be like, look at this son of a bitch. Okay. Here's what you got to do. And then I'd watch <laughs> you do it. And then I'd be like, done. It's yours. Now, aesthetically, I'm going to give you advice. That's going to help you both aesthetically and, uh, with your business and, and financially. So here's what I want you to do. I want you to be very disciplined and structured with your diet and your workouts, not because they're going to make you shredded or look good. That's the side effect, but it's going to help you with your work. If you have your meals planned out, if you have your food ready to go, you do whatever day off you have, you prep your meals, you take them with you to work. You start your day off with a workout every single day, whatever time that is, you go to bed at the same time every night. It's only going to make you better at work that. And then the side effect of that is going to be the aesthetics. 
I got one last thing for you. I know I can sit here all day with you right here. I feel like, um, out of your circle of friends, are you the most financially successful? Oh, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I'd say from, uh, cause I'm actually from Wisconsin. Um, and like, I'm younger, my, my friends are in college still. And I, yeah. I mean, out of them, yeah, I'm the only one making okay. money right now. This is a big deal, bro. Okay. This, and this also took me a long time to really start to, it was tough. I, I, and I still, by the way, talk to my childhood friends, but you really are the average of the people that you spend the most time with the five people you spend the most time with. So actively go out and look for people doing shit that you want to do in your life. It's probably going to be yep. people that are 10 years older than you. Yeah. You're yeah. 21. You're probably going to be hanging out with 30 year olds and, and, and befriend them, befriend them, hang out with them, make time, make time for them. And I, people that ask me when I give this advice are always like, how do you do that? Do you break up with your old? I was like, no, it just, it'll naturally happen. You just make, just make effort, time with them. make effort to hang out with the new friends that are doing the things that you want to do in your life. And it'll just, it'll naturally work itself out. You don't have to have a breakup with your old friends. I'm not saying you can't still talk to your old friends like that. Just you want to make the people that you spend the most time with doing bigger shit than what you're doing. You, you will be, naturally get elevated in a group like that. You need to be the loser yep. among your friends. That's I don't right. mean be a loser. I mean, <laughs> you need to be among a bunch of like killers and be like, damn, okay. It'll elevate yeah. you for it's sure. It's amazing sure. what, ha especially someone who's like you already, who's already yeah. motivated and doing well, you put you in a, in a, in a room where you're doing the le the least and you will naturally get elevated. If you, yep. I don't know if you're an ex-sport guy with that, but it's like you playing whatever sport you like to play and playing either with a bunch of kidney gardeners or going out and playing with a bunch of college or pro athletes. It, what will naturally happen is you will elevate, you'll elevate or you'll sink yeah. to the other level. And that what happens to a lot of guys your age who are still stuck on the friends they went to college or high school with is they l allow these good friends who they have, they love them. They love them like family. Okay. And they, and they allow them to bring them down to their level it, because that it just naturally happens that way. Right. Yeah. Ryan, so one more thing I'm going to add to what Adam's saying. <laughs> this is important. And you know why we're excited? Cause it's great. It's not every day we get our hands <laughs> on somebody. Two more things after you. Like you <laughs> <laughs> last thing I'm going to say is, is this don't think you're missing out on anything. This is a big mistake. Young guys with a lot of talent. Uh, they think, oh shit, I'm missing out, man. I should be going out and partying and what, listen, you're a man. You're only going to become more attractive. You're only going to become uh, more popular as you get older and more successful. You'll have plenty of opportunities for that shit when you're rolling in money and you're successful and your buddy's just graduated, barely making 50 grand a year. So you're not missing out on anything. So if that ever creeps in your head, tell them to shut the F up and get out because <laughs> You got a goal and you're going to crush yeah. that goal. Vegas and Miami is way more fun at 30 when you're jacked and you got deep pockets. Trust me. <laughs> Just keep doing what you're doing, man. That's, That's it. it, man. Don't overthink All it. Right. Stay focused and, and you're going to keep crushing it. Yeah, yeah. Keep us posted, though, man. It's good to hear that we uh, yeah. put them on the forum. Are you in our forum? No, no, no. All right. No. Okay. We're going to put you in the forum. Yeah, put you in the forum. I want you in there. Yeah, I want to keep, keep, right on. keep up on you, man. Thanks, guys. I appreciate everything. You All got right. it, man. All right, dude. I wish, uh, I love, you know, I know Keep you, get an eye on that. you get excited like I do. Yeah. And I talk to a kid like that. I'm like, oh shit, let's do this. Get it. Yeah, I, mean, yeah, I could talk to him for, I mean, it's like going back and thinking about all the things that you I, would, I think you we touched on the most important things, yeah. dude, because the hard thing is going to be hanging out with your buddies who are yeah. not in the same place. And then the like, am it, I missing total out? total trap. Yeah. yeah. It happens to the best of us. hundred yeah. percent. Kids, Look, kids killing it though. hundred percent. Look, if you love the show, head over to mindpumpfree.com. Go get yourself some free fitness guides. They're all free and they're all for fitness. You can also find all of us on social media. Justin is on Instagram, Mind Pump Justin. I'm on Instagram, Mind Pump DeStefano. And Adam is on Instagram, Mind Pump Adam.